Bobby Page in the bar. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fantastic. So last session, it was Huel, Blinken, and uh, Destry at the Yawning Portal. When they woke up, Destry announced that he would be leaving the group, and he walked off after casting a, a smoke powder bomb or something to obscure his uh, his exit from the campaign. Um, uh, after that, we met his new character, Thorgren, on the outside of Waterdeep. When Thorgren was approaching Waterdeep, he was... Um, What's it called? Attempted a, mugged. There was an attempted mugging on him by some people from a group called the Ruby Rabbits. Thorgren quickly showed them that he was not to be messed with, but he felt bad for the thieves, so he gave them all his gold anyway as he came to the city. He went immediately to the Yawning Portal, where he met Blinken and Huel. Uh, Blinken went to the library to do research on the Castle Lanterns and their connection to the Vault of Dragons, while Huel and Thorgren met various factions at the Yawning Portal. Um, they did an interview with the Castle Lanterns butler, Milton. He wanted, he wanted to hire them to do security at the museum while the investigation into who broke into the museum was going on. Uh, the museum that y'all broke into has since been closed to the public and is only open to, to nobles. Victoro and Amala Castellanter have said allowing the common people into the museum is the reason why it was robbed in the first place. Uh, the group agreed to be security for the museum. After that, they met with the Ruby Rabbits. The Ruby Rabbits are a group of people that represent the peasants outside the city's walls saying that they don't get enough of the resources they help create. They were going to have a protest at the museum, and they asked Huel and Thorgren to be security there. They turned them down. Thorgren and Huel turned the Ruby Rabbits down. After that, they spoke to the Doom Raiders and agreed to do a quick job so that they could get all black clothes from the Doom Raiders. The Doom Raiders are a group of bards uh, that used to be very famous in Waterdeep. They used to be pretty big adventurers, too. Nowadays, they just run their own bar in Waterdeep called the Beer Golem. Uh, the job they did for the Doom Raiders was transporting beer uh, from a warehouse to their bar. But when they were done with the job, someone outside the Beer Golem, who was selling uh, silk root powder, asked the crew to commit an arson against a warehouse in the docks ward. The group said they would think about it, and they went off to do security at the museum. At the museum, they tried to shoo off a protest by the Ruby Rabbits, but the Ruby Rabbits' leader, Thromstroker Cause, stepped forward and got into a fight with Thorgren. Thorgren hit him, knocked him down. Blinken cut uh, his belt so his pants fell off, and he was embarrassed, and the Ruby Rabbits retreated. Uh, they did all of these missions because these are the factions in this campaign. As such, they have plus one renown with the Castle Enters, meaning that they are friends with the Castle Enters. They have negative one renown with the Ruby Rabbits. So the Ruby Rabbits don't like them, but it's not openly hostile yet. They also have plus one with the Doom Raiders. Now, after all that happened in the daytime, at night they went to the Docks Ward, and burned down a warehouse. Before they burned it down, they found out it was owned by the Xanathar Guild. They went back to the drug dealer outside of the Doom Raiders bar and told them that they knew what was going on, and the guy didn't seem all that bothered with it. The crew went into the Doom Raiders bar, the beer golem, to uh, drink the rest of the night away. They made... How much gold did y'all make in one day? Because you got I... something from the Doom Raiders. You got something from the Castle Lanterns. We made about 25 gold each. Roughly. And the Shadow Man. No, not 25 gold each. Five from the guy that asked you to burn down the warehouse. Three yeah. from the Castle Lanterns and one from the Doom Raider. So nine gold coins each. Nah. Yeah, nine. Hmm. Okay. Are you arguing, Brax? <laughs> You're just like, nah. 
<laughs> yeah. No, he's trying to fucking gaslight me. He's like straight up. He hasn't That's recorded, bro. Oh, if you're lying. Yeah. Shit like that is why I haven't recorded. <laughs> so I can remember what the fuck I said. Yeah, don't worry. And the stream and the recording is good. You're, you're, you're good. Yeah. You guys are losing so, us like 15 gold here. Do you fucking mind? <laughs> oh, damn. So, you lost you 15 you? gold. Okay, well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> that's what each I heard. Of this, each of these factions have their leaders, their captains, and then they also have their sergeants. For example, the Castle Enters. Lord and Lady Castle Enter are the captains, and Milton is their sergeant. If you impress their sergeant, you get to work your way up into the bigger story with uh, the captain of that faction. So you've met Milton of the Castlanters, you've met Sinesh of the Ruby Rabbits, and you've met all four members of the Doom Raiders. But who's in charge there is kind of difficult to figure out. They seem to be a bunch of burnt, burnt out people that don't like each other very much. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions about the last session before we get started? Uh, no, not me. Okay. Since Vinny uh, and Sean weren't here last week, we are going to start with them. Oh, also, over here on the Waterdeep map, I've made little tokens of places you've been. So here's El Torchal Villa. Since you researched uh, where Castle Lantern Villa was, that's right here. This is the Yawning Portal right here. And you are currently at the Beer Golem. When we get to the full size map, I've also put some city features of Waterdeep in there. Okay, so uh, Sean and Vinny, roll initiative, and we'll see who goes first. Since y'all weren't here last week, we'll figure out what you did on your day of role play. Yes, we'll kind of do it quickly and get y'all all together so that we can all play as a group. Get a ten. Good. Ah, shit, I spelled your name wrong on your token, Vinny. I'll fix that. It's okay. This guy dies. I'll choose a more simple name. No, your immersion. It's broken. I've I've failed. Don't worry. Okay. He's used to having everyone spell it wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. I should make it a different misspelling every session. <laughs> there you go. That's the spirit. All right. Okay. So, Shazaprad, you wake up in the yawning portal uh, in your room that your friends uh, uh, had rented. Uh, you didn't know much about this uh, mysterious man named Delanis who had been paying for the room, except that he is now dead. Y'all shoved him in a briefcase of holding the night before and when you wake up all of your companions have left except for the goblin Inchi who is sleeping what do you do well, I think it's time to finish off those grapes I'm just gonna sort of sit by the window overlooking the street and uh, start eating some grapes <laughs> and watching the passers by <laughs> now as a cleric of Sune uh, you specifically said she's a goddess of hedonism, so you enjoy each and every grape. You look at each passerby on the street below and enjoy their, their outfits, the way they walk, the attitude that you can see on their face. Uh, each and every one of them are unique. What did you want to do today in Waterdeep? Oh, I've got to go sell myself a bottle of wine. Go mm -hmm. hit up a couple stores, replace those bottles of wine with several nicer bottles. Yes, yes, there you Steve, go. You also have other your... social events or festivities to join into. Yes, you also have uh, your 50 gold coins that you earned for participating in the museum heist. Oh my. Well, you I also should probably know... go make a payment on that gambling debt. Yeah, at, that is due at the end of the week, but you could also go pay it off right now. Uh, that is going to be at the Beer Golem. That is where the Lone Shark Istrid Horn works. Uh, you know that. That's where you made the bet and stuff. You've been there with Destry before. It's a popular bar. Um, 
So we'll say that you can sell that nice bottle of wine. Uh, that was five gold coins. Uh, do you want to role play selling that? Do you want to try to upsell it or something? Or do you just want to sell it for its street value? I'll probably sell it, spend like two and a half gold getting some other assorted <clears> wine. <throat> Probably get some nice cups and things for the party. It's got kind of, you know, okay. I kind of guess I get like more like, um, I guess like a sake set. What's a sake set? Oh, those tiny cups. The tiny cups with like the freaking teapot if you're doing like hot sake. So kind of like, basically, I'm getting a freaking tea set. Okay. Tea set, uh, couple hunt. things. Gonna go sample some stuff if they've got like freaking samples I can get for the wine or uh, wine, rice wine, whatever. Okay, um, we are gonna roll a charisma check for your day at the market, the big part of Waterdeep that is all stalls all over. This is the best place to find fresh imports. Uh, uh, and all different types of wine from all over Faerun. Go ahead and roll a charisma check, and we'll see how much you can get a bottle of wine for. Oh, that's... Oh, oh, let's give that a little... Uh, open. Oh, my. Is that a nat 20? Mm, no, plus that's two. of the plus, yeah. Okay. So you spend some time walking around, figuring out the best deals. Um, you're going to buy your sake set first before you go tasting. Do you want the nice sake set for two gold coins or the decent sake set for one? Oh, I'm definitely getting the nice one. All right. Take off two gold coins and say that you have a nice sake set. And I'm going to say that you could get four bottles of nice wine for half a gold coin each right you know like what places make good wine without upcharging too much and you know which uh which wineries sell really expensive wine that's not worth all that much so with that how many bottles of wine would you like to buy at half a gold coin each oh well i'm probably gonna get like I'll probably get two bottles for now, just so I'm not carrying around too, too much. Okay. Uh, the thought strikes you that you, you could also have barrels delivered wherever you want. Mm. I mean, I'm definitely going to inquire about freaking bulk purchasing. <laughs> okay. Uh, the person that you're talking to uh, at this stall here, she says, you know, we actually have the last bottle of uh, wine from Snow Beetle Orchery before it went rotten. This has become highly valuable. And it's very good. It's a very sweet, delicate wine. It's been aged a few years. It's quite good. Oh, and how much does that fellow run for? We are willing to sell it by the barrel for uh, 10 gold coins each. After all, it is uh, quite good on its own, but also it's now worth quite a bit more. Hmm. I shall definitely have to have a little rendezvous with my companions and see if our next soiree is deserving of such a drink. What color me intrigued? Come back soon. This is a favorite of the nobles, and they are buying it up by the barrel. As I said, it's the last of Snow Beetle's best. Uh, before long, this will be a, a distant memory. You know what? You know what? You sold me. I'll take it. She says, excellent. The ten gold coins, sir. And also... Would you like to make a donation to the Snow Beetle family? Oh, I don't see why not. I'll throw him another two gold. Thank you for that, sir. It's much needed. Their entire uh, meadery and orchard, it's gone rotten and fallow. Terrible thing. 
Okay, so go ahead uh, and mark off 12 gold coins, and you yep. now have a barrel of snow beetle wine. All right, and I now don't have enough to pay off the full debt, but that's fine. <laughs> um, this Got person two says that. And a barrel of wine, 100% worth. Uh, would you like to have this delivered back to the awning portal? Uh, the merchant will throw it in for free. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna want that delivered. I'm uh, I'm a little bit of a twig. Carrying a barrel of wine is not uh, my forte. Fantastic. Okay, so after that, I'm gonna say, do you still want to make your way to the beer golem to talk to your loan shark? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm still gonna go like okay. make a freaking payment for the next couple weeks here. Because how much is the weekly oh. payment on this loan? Uh, you haven't negotiated that with her yet. You kind of like Destry have been avoiding her. You know that uh, she worships uh, the god of money. She's a cleric, actually. She worships the god of money. So she's really, really uh, on you about paying that debt on time. All right, fair enough. All right, well, you will join the rest. In we go. You will join the rest of the group at the beer golem later. In Sheev, you wake up in the yawning portal. You are the last one to wake up uh, in the group, which is fitting. You had a lot to recover from. Uh, we can say that you're back at full health. What would you like to do today? Uh, they left me again. Mm. All right, whatever. She's mm. just uh, stretching, uh, cracking his back, and uh, he hobbles downstairs. He waves at the bar. Uh, if Bonnie's there, he throws a smile. If Bonnie is not there, he is very dismissive. Um, okay, since you want to do the yawning portal, I'll drag you over here. I changed the yawning portal map. I think it's a bit more detailed. Uh, let you know where you are in the city. I like it. So, uh, Inchi, everybody else woke up around noon. Since you slept in even longer, you would be waking up around 4 p.m. Uh, that's uh, good for you, though, because you're back at full health. Uh, Vinny, since you weren't here yesterday either, let me explain how this works. At the Yawning Portal, uh, there's going to be uh, a member of each faction there that is constantly available for you to talk to or recruit uh, or to recruit you into a mission. Uh, this is how you can earn renown with these groups, uh, but just like last session, sometimes those missions might conflict with each other, or you might be asked to do something that would harm another faction. Um, these right here are the Doom Raiders. This is the Artificer. Uh, she works for Force Grey, the law enforcement faction. Over here are representatives of the Sea Maidens Fair. Here is a representative of Xanathar, the Xanathar's Thieves Guild. And over here is Milton. He is doing interviews for private security for the Castle Lanterns in a private room. And at the bar is Sinesh of Thresh, uh, Grung, a frog humanoid creature uh, who works for the Ruby Rabbits. Kuehl, your cart, your magic cart, is also back here by the stables. I have a little token for it now. And Inchi, uh, at the bar, you see Dernan, the owner of the Yawning Portal, and Bonnie, your friend who has given you uh, eggs for free every once in a while. Uh, she waves at you, but the bar is very busy. Uh, she's del delivering a bunch of beer to a grung, a frog humanoid creature. Uh, Inchi, like, pulls himself up onto the bar uh, furthest down to where the customers are, and he yells across the bar, Bonnie, where's the Gliss's weapon shop? I need a dagger. Uh, she says, uh, that's not really my uh, area right now. And the, she uh, gets distracted uh, serving the grung. The old man across the bar, Dernan, right here, he leans across and says, Oi, mate, what you need a dagger for? Because a man needs a dagger. What the hell are you asking for? Huh? <laughs> He smiles at that. Uh, he says, yeah, I know quite a few of the blacksmiths around here. I'll give you a recommendation. How much gold are you looking to spend? 
Uh, 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 two? Uh, out. They just point me to one, damn it. He raises his eyebrow. Two gold for a dagger. All right, he points you to the right place to go. He says, that one there. He's trustworthy. Always uses good materials. Won't overcharge you. Trust him with my life. Uh, uh thank you, not Bonnie. Um, <laughs> all right, bye. And, uh, and she just goes ahead and uh, goes to the recommended blacksmith. Okay. Uh, and she, I'm going to say it's nearby. Uh, you're right next to the Trades Ward, uh, which is an area where people live and work, but it is known for its shops. It has even more shops than the market that Vinny was just in. Uh, you go over to this um, this blacksmith, and he sells you a good quality dagger. Did you want to ask him to do, to do anything special with it? Um, No. It, did I actually spend two gold for that? Yeah, you would spend two gold for it. Well, then I would like to cast Distort Value to half that price. Distort Value 5E. Cast a spell on an object no more than one foot on a side. All right. So this blacksmith would have to roll an intelligence check. Right? Your yep. spell save DC is 12. He is a commoner, so he's going to roll a d20 with disadvantage, okay? Oh, his lowest one is a... It's a 12, and the tie goes to the defender in D&D, so. Uh, you, you said two for this? All right, I, I'll, I'll take this, sir. He says, yeah, mate, look, I have daggers for one gold coin if you want them, but this one's quality, and I'm sorry, it's two gold pieces. I, I ain't, who you call him broke, huh? Just give me the dagger. All right. All right, he hands it across, and he holds out his hand for two gold pieces. Uh, and she drops the two gold pieces, but uh, gives him a filthy look, because uh, he wanted to get just to spend that one. And then she just walks right out of that store. Okay. Uh, you look at your dagger. Uh, it is it is a quality dagger. Uh, you notice that the leather on it has been um, properly oiled. Uh, even uh, before and after it was cut, it was wrapped around with care. This thing will hold up to blood, dirt, water. Uh, it's going to be a good dagger that lasts you a long time. Uh, the and blade she... is about six inches long. Uh, and she uh, sheathes his dagger just in the uh, waistband of his pants. And uh, he... It... Let's I'll see. say for two gold pieces, you get like a, a dagger pouch with it, like a simple one. Sure. Uh, yeah, and she's so a little sheath. And she still stuffs the uh, sheathed blade into the waistband of the pants. So it, it's still a kind of an uncomfortable situation, but it's not going to cut his thigh now. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. It's very sharp, properly sharpened, brand new. Probably the nicest dagger you've ever had. Uh, and she grins at his new dagger situation and looks around for the nearest exit to the city. I, I, I think it's time to head out of this uh, city <clears throat> town. I'm about tired of all the busy crowds and the dolls kidnapping me. Time to go for a hike. your token okay so you are right over here in the trades ward uh the quickest way to get to your family would be to go a little bit north to the river gate right here 
and you start making your way there. Before you head out, I want to describe something that I've put on this map. Um, I've put uh, the Yawning Portal, I've put the Beer Golem uh, on here, but also there's a city feature of Waterdeep I forgot to mention. The Walking Statues of Waterdeep. These are towering 50, 60, 80 foot statues all over Waterdeep that are known as Waterdeep's protectors. At one point, uh, they stood on the outside of the city, or they stood over uh, by Mount Waterdeep, uh, silent and stoic. But one day they came alive and started attacking residents and buildings of the city, and as such, they're scattered all over. Inchi, as you walk through the streets of the Trades Ward, past all these different shops, these vendors, these wonderful smelling foods, fabrics uh, that you've never seen, and colors and designs that amaze you, you also see towering over all of it, this 60 foot tall stone knight, his sword in his sheath and his shield uh, in the ground with his hand on it. He towers over everything, uh, a nice little landmark as you uh, make your way through the city. You exit through the river gate. You are asked to present a little paper ID uh, that you're expected to have on you as, at all times uh, to the guards and they mark your little exit from the city and you start uh, marching to where your family is, right? Yeah, sorry, my kidnappers didn't take that from last time. The reason I bought a dagger is I assumed my uh, kidnappers stole all my belongings. Um, no, they didn't take it. You had it on you. I never said Good. they took it away from you. But now you have a really nice dagger. Fair enough. Before that, you just you just had one that was given to you by the Thieves Guild, like a basic dagger. Fine by me. Yeah, uh, and she just makes his way to his uh, family. All right. So you sent me a message describing what your family is. You said it was a crew or a family of about 60 goblins, right? Yes. All right. And uh, what... Are they like a self-sustaining community, or do they build something or make something that they trade with? Like, what do they do? Uh, pretty self-sustaining. Uh, and she is their only means of outside contact because they do not have any monetary income. And that is exactly <laughs> Inchi's purpose of this trip. Because without him, they are self-sustaining otherwise. Mm -hmm. So what do they use the gold for that they can't make or get themselves? Uh, medicine, proper clothing, and really just anything that they find that they, uh, want. Because then she also wants to treat his family every now and then, you know? Okay, fair enough. Um. Okay, just a second. All right, so um, we can spend more time here uh, in a different session. I want to kind of do this quickly and get you back to the group, if that's okay with you. Fair enough. Okay, so you walk into this uh, forest, this clearing. Is there a name for your little goblin village? Nope. Nope, okay. <laughs> so you uh, walk in here. Some people have made homes out of wood planks in the trees. Some people have dug burrows into really big trees around the roots, and they live there. Other people have just dug, dug big holes, multi-roomed little uh, hole caves that they live in. And some people live in little shacks and huts around here. There are patches of uh, tilled earth where they have been uh, uh, picking their harvest. It is the fall season. Winter is coming. Um, and who did you want to talk to in your little goblin village? Uh, and she heads straight for the uh, soup hut and goes, the Soup hut? Yeah. Mommy, where are you? Ah. Little itchy. Little itchy, buddy. Come here. Come here. Ah. And, uh, and she goes in to hug his mom. And I missed you. You know I love you. And she's just a little bit taller than you, and she pats your head. 
Uh, she has a tuft of like curly red hair on her. Otherwise, she looks exactly like you. And she, her big red eyes look down at you, and she says, "And she, buddy, you look or and she, bubby, you look like you're not eating enough. But in that ah. city, you gotta eat more. You gotta eat properly. They don't feed you good, thick food like we feed you here." Um, there's dumpsters everywhere. I, I'm eating good. I, I, I oh. there's every corner. There's food somewhere, you know. Oh, and gee, I'm sure you're dining and diving into the best of all the dumpsters. But it's not the the quality of food you eat. It's the quantity of food, my little man. You gotta grow yourself up. You're gonna be big and strong. Gotta be a city boy for all of us. Okay, it, 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 nothing will compare to your suit, mommy. Now, can I, 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 let me see what you got cooking up in here. And he uh, peeks into uh, the soup cauldron that's uh, always boiling out in the middle of this uh, village. She says, um, we were able to get a really good deal on some meat. We traded with the snow beetle orchard family, group of halflings. Something's happened to that orchard. It's really gone under recently. So they're just giving away their livestock. We sold them some vegetables and uh, uh, fruits that we had been able to jar. And for that, we got this. And she hands you like a sausage stew, a thick, hearty stew with thick chunks of uh, sausage uh, and beans uh, and, a, and a beefy broth. Uh, it's quite delicious and, and smells very fragrant. Well, there's meat in the soup right now. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and, and she takes a good old bite. Mmm. This is good. Better than that uh, 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 waffle ball thing that I had uh, uh, a minute ago. Those are actually good. You should try one, Mom. How would a waffle come in a ball? That's absurd. Uh, ah. So y'all talk for a while, and she asks you, So, Inchi, my boy, are you being safe in the city? I know that there's a lot of, a lot of crime in the city right now. Uh, well, I mean... Yeah, I, I mean, I, I got, I got, you know, like I got kicked once, but you know, that's no big deal. Uh, uh, something oh, bit my cool. organs out of my stomach, but you know, that's all healed. I'm fine now. And uh, I, I was, I was in jail for a little minute, but uh, you know, I, she's a free man now, so I, I'm being safe, mom. Okay, and she okay. You just keep being safe. We don't want your organs coming out again. Don't scare me like that. Be no, safe. yeah. You Trust me, I was scared yourself. too. Do we need to send some of our, some of our, uh, some of the younglings in with you? Uh, not with me, but look here, here, mom. And uh, and she pulls out his gold pouch, and she gives his mom thirty-five gold of it. He says, "This this is for the uh, this is for you guys. It's not much, I, I, but this is what I was able to get from my last job. I, I will try to get more soon. I will be back soon. I promise, Mom." Inchi, Inchi, that's so much money. A, a guild member might make this much in a year. Inchi, with this, we're going to be able to buy winter coats for everybody. We're going to be able to buy the 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 good um. Uh, mortar so we can insulate our huts. And she, my boy, this is incredible. Well, uh, maybe I can come back and pay for everyone's winter boots, right? <laughs> but I I'll try it, Mom. Uh, we don't need boots. Never needed them. Yeah, the dirt feels too good between the toes, right? But the I dirt I'll feels too good between the toes. Feels really good, but I, I, I need to go back, Mom. I've got folks waiting for me somewhere, and uh, I think this is a good opportunity for us. Um, she says, okay, Inchi, but b b before you go, uh, uh, about a week ago, uh, some of the, some, some people, some humans in, uh, in their fancy cloaks, they came down here. And they started asking us all kinds of questions, like how long have we been here and what exactly we do around here. They said that this land is technically owned by the Castellanters and that we've just been farming on it under common law. Uh, they said that that might be changing soon. Uh, 
Mom. I didn't un- I didn't understand much of it, but I figured you, my boy, you could look into it for us. I with all the money you're making, maybe you could talk to one of them lawmen that know all the all the codes and the and legal stuff, right? I don't understand it either, Mom, but I, I, I got some folks that might understand better and I will look into this. They will not take this from us. I promise. It sounded like they were just asking questions. Like maybe the law is changing soon. But if I there's will anything kill you them. could do, please, please look into it. I, I will, mom. It'll be all right. All right. And she, as you exit the soup hut, uh, you look out and you see your cousins. You see some brothers. You see sisters, uh, uncles, and uh, grandfathers and grandmothers. Uh, and they're all goblins, but you see one person that's not a goblin. Uh, you see that frog person that was at the yawning portal earlier, and he's talking to some of the people uh, outside of the soup hut. And when he looks at you, he gives you a little nod of recognition. Do you do anything? Uh, yeah, walk right up to him and say, are, are you a cousin I haven't talked to you before? Where, says, why are your ears so small? Where are they? He says, well, we might sound alike, and we both got big red eyes, but no, I don't think you're any distant cousin of mine, friendo. And he holds out his hand. I don't know. His name's Sinesh. I come from the Ruby Rabbits. The Ruby Rabbits? Are are they some red rabbits around here? Well, you aren't a rabbit. You're a frog. Maybe a goblin without ears. He says, maybe you're just a frog with ears. Uh, do you oh. shake his hand? Uh, and she's perplexed by his comment. He's kind of thinking how frog-like he is, looking at the, seeing if there's webs between his fingers. Uh, while he has his hand outstretched, you know, viewing his hand, he just kind of shakes his hand like, uh, hi, yeah, I, I you, hello. When your hand. When your hand touches his, it goes numb for just a second. And when you pull it away, your feeling returns back to your hand, but it's coated in a thin slime. Uh, The frog's entire body is covered in that thin slime. And she licks it off his hand. Oh, God. And she roll a constitution check. (laughs) This is going to be interesting. Ah, come on. Don't get a one. <laughs> and she, uh, the frog sees you do this, and he goes, "Whoa, friend, no!" And th- it's too late for him to stop you. And he says, "Oh boy, hey, you're gonna have some fun for a little bit here, and then you're gonna piss and shit your guts out." And uh, I'm not sticking around for that. But what hey, do man, you? What do you, you mean? Like you, know? you don't. You don't put something uh, into Inchi's hand if you don't expect Inchi to eat it. What the hell's wrong with you? Inchi, are you talking to the frog person on the left side of your vision or the frog person on the right side of your vision? <laughs> He's switching between them. Uh, as you do that, there's even more frog people around you. Are you talking to, like, the four to your left, the four that are behind you? As many as he can, and he's getting dizzy from it soon. Don't dare you don't don't get go don't get near my soup. Get out of here. He, he grabs you by like your uh like right under your armpits where your clothes are, so that slime isn't touching your skin, and he holds you as your legs give out and you fall down to the ground, and all like ten of the frogs around you say Come find me at Snow Beetle Orchard. I can help your family with the castle antas. Mom, she, there's an you, army of frogs here. Get them. And she, you have a dream about you fighting uh, armies and armies of little frogs, green frogs, red frogs, purple frogs. And when you wake up, you are naked uh, <laughs> in a bathroom uh, wrapped in a few towels. Uh, the bathroom smells like sweat and shit, and you oh, are oh, alone. Yeah. What do you do? Uh... And she walks out butt naked, like, where is that frog? I'm going to kill him. You walk out into the communal area of the soup hut, 
there's about 12 goblins in here that all turn and see you and do not react to you being naked because they don't care. Uh, your mom says, oh, Inchi, you're awake. You shouldn't be walking. Uh, she gives you another, another bowl of soup uh, and helps you regain your strength. Um, after about an hour, you feel like yourself again. What do you do? Uh, and she kind of still remains naked, like, uh, where, who was that frog? Why was he here? Your mom says, oh, he's, uh, from this group called the Ruby Rabbits. We've actually been using them to get some clothes, uh, and a few types of herbs that we haven't been able to get. Uh, they say that they're different types of traders and that they want to help the people that live outside the city walls. Are they rabbits or frogs? There's a frog person. I think they call that a grang. There's some kind of cat person. I think they call that a tabuxi. Uh, they have uh, some of those crow people that can only repeat things that have been said to them. I think they're called crankcoos. A lot of animals. Few humans, few elves. I didn't hear no rabbits. They're a bunch of liars then. No, but... Inchi, they call themselves the ruby rabbits. They are a bunch of liars, but they said they might be able to help. So I will go talk to these liars and see what they know about the castellators and our rifle land. Now I just need to find those fields of rabbits. So Snow Beetle Orchard is like to the north of you, outside the walls of uh, Waterdeep. But walking there would take you even longer than it would walk back to the Yawning Portal. And it's already uh, a couple hours past nightfall. What would you like to do? Mm. I might be able to give me some backup. Look. You could also, yeah, go later. Yeah. Look, Mom, I, I will talk to these guys. Let me know if they come back around. I will be back and just let me know if they come back before I do. But I've got some friends who might help me out. Uh, they kind of abandoned me twice, so I don't know how helpful they'll be, but I will ask them. She says, uh, oh, okay, and she, as, as long as you think you're okay to walk. And she, um, uh, she gives you a few uh, pieces of bread. You notice that there's not even that much mold in this bread, so they, they, they're eating good these days. Uh, um, they give you a little blanket to protect you against the cold air. <clears throat> um, Mom, uh, the the city folk in Waterdeep, uh, they don't like it when my uh, when I'm when my thing is out. Uh, do you got a, like a, a a cloth or something I could? Where my where do my clothes go? She says, "Oh, we've been washing them up for you," uh, and she hands you back uh, the sa your clothes. Uh, they've been cleaned. Probably for the first time in a few weeks. They don't smell like the sewers anymore. Uh, you've also uh, been properly stitched up for any wounds that you have. And she just takes a big whiff of the clothes and like, ah, it's been a while since he smelled like soup. I've missed this. Mom, it is good to see you. Cousin, cousin, uncle, aunt, grandma, uncle, gra and she, cousin. And she. Yeah. Inchy, Inchy. Yeah. Inchy. Yeah. Inchy. They're just all it's, shaking it, your hand. It's good to see everyone. Bulb, Dad, hello. Uh, you, 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 Grandma, too. Okay. Uh, good you to see say you. Then, to, yeah. You say goodbye to all 50 of them. We fade out on that as you walk back to the city. Yep. Um, all right. So everybody else, y'all are at the Beer Golem. Um, Vinny has just walked into the Beer Golem. Uh, and before all the roleplay starts, I want to say one thing. Uh, Blinken, uh, in Galanis's bag of holding, there's one thing I forgot to mention. You have 10 paper birds. Those paper birds can be used to send a written message to anybody in the city just by knowing their name. So you have your whole crew here, except for Inchi. If you wanted to invite Inchi here, you would just have to write him a note with this paper bird, say his name to it, and it would fly off and deliver a message.
I would definitely send a, a paper bird message, so, you know, kind of uh, notated, whispered entry, and then the note would say something like, uh, you were sleeping, you were still beat up, uh, so we had to do some errands. Uh, we're at the, you know, at this location now, and, uh, you know, I'll tell the paper bird, hey, or Inchi. All right, when you say for Inchi, the paper uh, folds itself into the image of this uh, origami bird, and its little wings flap, and it drifts off through the air and the smoke of the beer golem, and it drifts out a window. A few minutes later, Inchi, there is a paper bird flying around your head. You catch it, and there is this handwritten note from your friend Blinken asking you to meet him at a bar in the trades ward called the Beer Golem. It's actually very close to the river gate. Uh, and she reads it. Uh, he doesn't stop walking, but he just keeps walking in the uh, direction of where he needs to go to meet up with his friends. He's like, how come the birds seem to want to find me more than my friends? I don't. Yep. All the right, whatever. Message from your friends. Uh, a message right. from your friends. I guess the bird is my only friend now, but I, go, I will go see my acquaintances. And, uh, and she makes his way to uh, Blinken and the rest. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, everybody, y'all are now together at the Beer Golem. I'll say uh, Sh Shazzle Thrad and Inchi uh, got there at the same time. Huel, you are there. You have Destry's little imp raven with you. Blinken, you are there. You said you have your baby dragon with you. Uh, uh, yeah, you... kind of hidden from sight as best as I could, yeah. just in case people ask questions. Yeah, uh, you can kind of hide it like in your cloak. Uh, it's uh, just about the size of your forearm right now. Yeah, okay. Um, and you are there with Thorgrim. Uh, Shazelfrad and Inchi, you see your friends sitting at this table in the center of the bar. When you walk in, uh, behind the bar, the bartender is Schema Weird, Weird Bottle, the guy that was managing the warehouse y'all got the wine from yesterday. And up on stage is Dabble Star Song. Zaraj the Hunter and Istrid Horn playing a song by the Doom Raiders where they say, Give me a sh I'll give you a shot to remember, and you can take all the pain away from me. Uh, the bar is loud, it is half filled up, people are talking and smoking pipes. Uh, you can see people snipping silk root powder off the tables and uh, putting different types of weeds uh, and herbs into their pipes. Um, what would y'all like to do? And she pets Destry's Raven and talks to Huel, saying, Hey, hey, man, how you doing? I'll, like, blow a big cloud of smoke in his face as I'm smoking the pipes, too. Uh, I've been, uh, I've been all right. I've been all right. How, how's it been? And she inhales the smoke, says, <clears throat> That's good shit. Uh, I've been doing good. Doing good. Uh, where did you guys go? I woke up and I was alone again. Uh, uh, how are, how is everyone else? Me too, little Inchi, and he finger guns little Inchi. Um, uh, Claude Red Hand comes out of the beak and does a finger gun at you, and then disappears back inside. Yeah. Uh, well, I've been researching a lot of things with, uh, the subject of uh, Castle Ladder. Um, I kind of wanted to wait till everybody showed up about it, give them, you know, the information about Castle Lantern and all that. So, oh yeah, no, I I just learned recently that Castle Lanterns are a bunch of assholes. Uh, what did what did you learn? Yeah, but that that's the summary of that. Yes, they they are a bunch of right. Dickheads. Yeah, I knew it. Um. But yeah, there, there's some other dark shit they they were uh, involved with, but for the most part, yeah, they're dickheads. Yeah, like trying to steal my land. That's that that's got to be the worst thing they've done, right? You don't do that. I mean, that 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 is kind of true. Um, I don't know how the laws are around here. If they do have right to do that, we could. Probably look into that later. 
good. Blinken, Blinken, you would know that inside the city, about a hundred years ago, the open lord of Waterdeep, um, I don't remember the person's name at the time, broke the nobles' holding of all the land inside the city, and they partitioned it up. Certain guilds were able to own certain land. Private individuals were able to learn, own certain land. The nobles were, of course, able to buy a lot of the land in the city. But inside the city walls is kind of a, not necessarily a free market system, but like a similar to a free market property system. Outside the city walls, though, all of that land is owned technically by nobles. Peasants are allowed to live and farm on it as long as they pay taxes to the nobles. It's called common land. It's owned by the peasants under common law. The nobles allow this because they're not really using the land. So, of course, they'll let someone live on it and farm on it if they pay taxes. All right, and I'll retract the statement and say, have you, do you know if, I don't know, your, your people pay taxes for it? I mean, that, that is a thing around here. What are taxes? That land is ours. Well, they allow you to stay there, right? I, I look around to the other party members be like, that, I mean, that, that's kind of how it works. I don't, I don't know how much the taxes are, but uh, basically it means you're paying to stay there and not get in trouble with them. Because I don't know how, I mean, the castle owners, they might be pretty dirty. But, um, you, you, you are probably... making, you are making up rules now. I didn't even hear the word taxes until I stole from the castellators. This is just a revenge plot. I know it. I mean, you could think that, yeah. Uh, it is a thing. <clears throat> Everybody that wants to roll an insight check. Uh, Not on Inchi, but just a general insight check. Oh, okay. Mm. Damn. Uh, Blinken and Inchi. Uh, Blinken, you look Inchi up and down, uh, even though his clothes are clean, you remember that they were covered in sewers a minute ago. Inchi, you think about the fact that you didn't know what taxes were until two seconds ago, and the idea strikes both of you that your family's probably not on that land legally. Well, look, we, we've been there for uh, for a while, and... They can't kick us out. Please help me. My family, we can't lose the soup hut. Well, you know, funnily enough, we are kind of... We did a a job with the cast lantern, so maybe if we grow a relationship with them, maybe we'll have persuasion and uh, maybe talk to them. But right now, um, we're going to have to deal with that. So, you know down the road because we just did like one job um and you know uh i would think that if we keep doing more jobs maybe they'll you know be a little lenient be a little easier for you folks um and you know he kind of shrugs i think that might be the best route for this yeah sounds good to me i i don't think they'll uh I don't think they'll even do anything, but I don't like them talking to my family about it. Yeah, again, yeah. I agree that, that they're a bunch of dickheads, so... Mm-hmm. Okay, um... Uh... Oh, Vinny, uh, you might like this. Last session, they bought an ounce and a quarter of silk root powder. Mm. City. Oh, yeah, uh, keep that in the down low. I, I bought a lot of that stuff, actually. <laughs> the, the, what uh, do you call it? I the mean, booger I still sugar? have Buddy's little freaking dime bag, too. <laughs> yeah, so together, y'all have an ounce and a half of silk root powder. I have like six of them. I bought yeah, six I bags. Know. 
No, you buy I know what I'm going to do. Which is I don't five packs. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It's oh, a need no, to know basis. You have a quarter. You have an ounce and three quarters <laughs> of silk root powder. Fuel's loaded right now. He's not on it, but like he's like loaded with it. Like, oh, that's a personal supply, my guy. We're yeah. in a bar. Everyone's bumping. <laughs> It sounds like I'm going to be making lawyer money soon, so I mean, I can afford it. <laughs> All right, what did y'all want to do inside the beer golem? Some people came here for a reason. Um, y'all can role play with the Doom Raiders while you're in here. Uh, you can look around the bar to see if you know anyone here, or uh, we can head back to the Yawning Portal. Uh, and she tugs on uh, Shaz's sleeve. It's like, uh, <laughs> hey, elf, I just realized you're the only one that's like five foot or taller. <laughs> How does it feel to be around such a bunch of shorties? You tall weirdo. I'm getting talked to right now. Oh, ow. <laughs> ow. Ow, 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 ow. Holy shit. Yeah, okay. I'll be up in a sec. Oh. Okay. Jesus. Did I just come back to Vinny just, like, getting Dying, over? yes. I just I, standing up out of the chair. I was concerned about the noises, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Post-surgery. Post-hernia <sighs> surgery, so... I am feeling it. Fair enough. Well, NG is just making fun of you for being tall. Oh, it's fine. Like, <laughs> I, I usually stand out because, you know, I'm so short. Now you stand out because you're so tall. How does it feel, loser? It feels great. I have armrests everywhere. <laughs> I like you. Uh, Shaz, you came to the beer golem uh, to talk to your loan shark. You recognize her as one of the musicians on stage. It is Istrid Horn, and she is playing uh, a piano along with the song that is going on right now. Well, for the moment, I'm just going to enjoy the music because I'm not going to disrupt a performance for business. All right, you notice that the lead singer, uh, Dabble, uh, the way that he sings, he kind of puts his whole voice into it. Uh, the the words, the syllables, they kind of slide. They sound every once in a while like they're whiny and desperate and crying. But you recognize the artistry in it all the same. Uh, never once does his enunciation fail. At every point, it is to convey an emotion that wouldn't be conveyed were, were the words said so simply. But you also notice that the song... <clears throat> Everybody's giving their all into it. The the orc that's going on on these uh, big hide skin drums and cymbals is giving her all to it. Istrid on the piano, she's slamming down into the keys. Dabble, he's really strumming his lute as hard as he can, but there doesn't really seem to be much melody, much energy. The drums and the piano are overtaking uh, the, the lute and the vocals. But even through that, you can hear the lyrics. Give me a shot to remember, and you can take all the pain away from me. Your kiss and I will surrender. The sharpest lives are the deadliest to lead. And the song ends, and the crowd cheers. A bunch of the people in the crowd seem to be fans of this bard group, and uh, they start uh, leaving the stage, except for Davil, who continues talking uh, to members of the crowd. Uh, your lone shark, uh, Isher Horn, uh, stops by a table over here by herself and lights up a pipe and starts smoking it. The orc comes over here to the bar and starts talking to Schemo. Shaz, what do you do? All right, I will go over to her. And say, hello, hi. 
Know that you've been waiting for me, as I've been waiting for payment. However, I do have my payment here. Uh, oh, she sorry, I'm a little, you. uh, a little out of it at the moment, as you're gonna notice me wiping at my nose. With a little bit of, uh, streak of white on it. <laughs> uh, in, in the Forgotten Realms, it, it would be purple. All right, purple. Silk root, silk root powder is purple. Uh, let me bring up the picture of her that I have. I'm going to have walking up with one of my little tiny-ass sake glasses filled with some of that wine. Just uh, picking at a little bit of purple on the nose. There you go. Um, you walk up to her, uh, and she has this dark makeup around her eyes. She has this black hair. But even underneath all that, she looks like she has been sick uh, for a while. She looks very tired. Uh, she looks you up and down, and she takes a long puff on that pipe, and she says, So, you have the entire payment, Mr. Shazelfred? Not the entire, but the vast majority. The vast majority. Uh, tell me how much the vast majority is, eh? Forty-five out of the fifty? She raises her eyebrows and starts coughing on the hit she was taking from her pipe. She goes, <clears throat> well, that is actually uh, the vast majority. Uh, yeah, I can go ahead and take that and I'll mark it down on your book. Uh, with a payment that big, I can take uh, the five next week and meet me back here. All right. I'm just gonna kind of like sway and fucking stagger off with my little little fucking glass. I'm gonna start pouring another one into one of the different glasses so that I'm walking around with these two little tiny sake glasses of wine. Just a second. I'm trying to remember what her god was, but I can't remember it. Oh well. She's sick. She can't even remember it now. So you walk off with your sake glasses back to the group. Did anybody else want to do anything in the beer golem? Uh, yeah, I had a question. Is Sad Boy over there my last surviving goon? Roll a perception check. <laughs> oh, he's gonna get it. 22. Damn. Oh. Nat 20. Yeah. You look across the bar, you're, um, you were poking fun at Vinny for being tall earlier, but this big old gray half-orc that was on the drums earlier comes marching down, and she is fully, like, eight feet tall. She is massive. She uh, leans up against the bar, and your attention is brought, drawn to Sad Boy McGee right behind her, and you recognize him instantly as the goon that got away. Blinken, this is your old buddy, Sad Boy McGee. He was actually telling you about the Doom Raiders the night of the museum break-in. Uh, and she uh, strokes over to Sad Boy, sits next to him, and uh, points to the Doom Raider right here and says, <laughs> See, I was just telling my friends, tall people, are they, they're funny looking. Uh, <clears throat> uh, goon number... Uh, were you two or three? I don't think you were one, but you you were three, right? Yeah, mate. I was. I told you my name was number three. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I I I'm sorry if I kept you uh, waiting. I I got uh uh yeah. I I got really hurt, but I got your gold, and I I do not let my Xanathar people down, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, here's your three gold, Mr. Goon Three. And uh, and she slides the three gold down into the uh, uh, counter in front of Sad Boy. Um, okay. And she roll a perception check. Uh, 
15. This uh, gnome right here, Schema Weird Bottle, uh, the member of the Doom Raiders who's bartending right now, when you say us Xanathar people got to stick together, he stops rubbing the glass that he was uh, cleaning, uh, and he moves a step closer to you, and then he starts cleaning it again, and he clears his throat and gets the attention of Zaraj the Hunter, and he nods his head towards you. You notice all of that out of the corner of your eye. Sad Boy McGee takes the three gold coins and he says, "What about uh, the payment for my for my buddies? They have they were owed three gold coins each too." Uh, and she noticing the Doom Raiders, he clears his throat and uh, prepares uh, uh, the most important persuasion of his life until now. Oh, your buddies uh, Zan and Ithar. Uh, the people we work for, yeah, no, they're they're back, and uh, uh, yeah, they're back uptown, you know. Uh, and and she throws Sad Boy a wink. So I think they're ready for you to, you know, get out of here and go find them. What? Yeah, go find Zand and Ithar. Um. So you basically loudly paint him and yourself as members of the Xanathar Guild? I am trying to uh, th- um, make it where he we work for people called Zand and, Zan and Ithar. Give me disadvantage if you want, but that oh, is the best oh, that, he, that okay. she can think of. I thought you were trying to intimidate him for a second. No, uh, no. Roll a charisma check? I don't know what this would be. Performance? Or just a general guess, persuasion? Uh, I guess I'll throw a persuasion. 21. God damn, dude. Uh, when you say it like that, uh, <laughs> you see both of the Doom Raiders like, uh, not be as tense anymore. And Schemo goes back to cleaning his bottle. And uh, Zaraj continues drinking from her giant mug. And Sad Boy looks at you and says, no, uh, no, mate, I can't go back to those guys, those human guys. Uh, I think I'm going to stay here and try to make some money a more honest way. Uh, and she puts his hand on uh, number three's shoulder and whispers to him, and that's all right, okay? Uh, you got your gold, and really, I, I do not care after that, but uh, Xanathar asked you to put in a good word for me, right? But and she's whispering this, please. Okay, yeah, specify that beforehand. <laughs> okay, yeah, you whisper that to him. What did you say to him? Uh, he he said he's just fine with that. He does not care what number three does after this. He uh he paid him fairly, and if the Xanathar Guild asks him how uh and treated uh, treated him, you know. All is good. All is good. Okay. He probably won't be going back to the Xanathar Guild. He's uh, he's scared. And she could okay. not care less. And uh, he joins his friends again. And then, like, I I, I noticed the uh, sad boy, and I'll I'll, I'll I'll just kind of randomly yell out, "Follow your dreams." He holds up his fists in the air, like, "Yeah." And he looks uh, over at the stage. He looks over at this uh, elf, Davil, who's the who's uh, bathed in all of this candlelight uh, and magical spells as he's singing uh, to a group of people at the table here. And you can tell that his dream is to one day be a bard like Davil's star song. Okay, is that it for the beer golem? I think so. You know, I'm glad my gooner is no longer living on the edge. <laughs> and he can finally live up to what he can. Who left over that? Oh, yeah, I did. Lamau. Lamau. Sorry. Okay, this map actually has a second floor for the Yawning Portal, but I don't want to load it in right now. So y'all get back to the Yawning Portal. Uh, when you get here, 
uh, what did y'all want to do? It's around midnight. Uh, y'all all had a busy day yesterday, so you're all pretty tired. What would y'all like to do? Um, probably get some food personally, and then uh, afterwards uh, head up to the room and kind of make sure the dragon's doing okay type of thing. Okay. When you get to the Yawning Portal, do you let your dragon creature out? You know that the Yawning Portal is the kind of bar that attracts people from all over Faerun and all over the plains, so no one would even think twice about you having it out. Uh, once I get in and I look around and, you know, get settled, yeah. Yeah, the bar is popping tonight. Uh, the faction representatives are all there. But also I have these... I'm calling them civilians, uh, these people that drink at the Yawning Portal that aren't involved in the story, uh, sitting at these tables. If you ever wanted to learn something about Waterdeep or just chit-chat with someone, uh, you could always ask these people. They'd be happy to let you in on the, the details of Waterdeep from their perspective. Um, I'm going to pull up the cost of living in D&D, and since it's the end of the day and y'all no longer have Galanis with you, Y'all are going to have to pay for your food. The room is paid up for four more nights. Um, this chart will paste in roll 20 or in. That kind of works. Okay, so in Discord chat, I just put the lifestyle per day. Uh, it ranges from wretched to aristocratic, and it has a price for all that. This would be your price of food uh, for the day, uh, and uh, the price of lodging would be determined by what place you're staying at. So this would be just for your food uh, today. So how does everybody eat? Blinken, you said you wanted to get something to eat first. How do you normally pay for your food? Are you a poor person, a modest person, a comfortable person? Um, or probably, what do you want to modest, spend? honestly. Okay. So for your entire day's food, subtract one gold coin. Yeah. Okay. Huel, how about you? He's probably the same way. He's probably modest. Make sure he gets what he wants, you know, like. Gets the good stuff. Subtract one gold coin from your inventory. Oh, yeah. Inchi, how about you? Inchi, the way you uh... Eat, the way you good. eat from dumpsters, you could get by as a wretched someone who doesn't spend any money on food. But if you do that for enough days, I will give you points of ex exhaustion. Yeah, uh, Inchi nudges uh, uh, Thorgrin and says, uh, <laughs> "Miss Mister G, right?" Uh, as then, then Inchi just leaves and go and rounds the building deep from the dumpster. What? <laughs> what, what, what was All that? Right. Rat, was that rat talking to me? That's a goblin. Uh, he had a few drinks with you at the beer golem. Y'all are friends now. Oh, uh, friends is a, a little bit. Of a stretch. He stinks. I also had the menu for the yawning portal here for uh, if y'all want to take a look at it. Uh, most of the food on it is covered under your daily expenses. Like it's like a nib, which is a copper piece. Um, a shard is, a, I think, what they call a silver piece. And it also has the prices for lodging uh, underneath, uh, which y'all will have to start paying um, uh, in four days. Okay, so Inchi, you subtract nothing from your uh, from your inventory. Uh, you manage to find a carcass of a chicken, a, a grilled chicken uh, that had a little bit of stuffing in it. Uh, there's like a drumstick and a little bit of stuffing left. Thorgrim, mm, how much money would you spend on food? How much would I spend on food? Yep. What's your lifestyle? I mean, I'm pretty poor right now.
So what was that? Two silver pieces. So silver. that's half a gold coin. Oh yeah, you gave away all your gold. Uh, that's not half a gold. Isn't like a gold piece five silver coins? I mean, it's one platinum is 10 gold. One gold is 10 silver. Well, actually, one gold is two electrum. But it's 10 gold to a silver. So it's five silver to an electrum. Oh, okay. Um... I'd say that really all you have on you is uh, like eight silver pieces, so subtract it from that. Oh, I had 14 after the jobs. 14 gold pieces? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So break one of those down into silver pieces. Uh, the bartender will exchange it for you. Or I'll break four of them down to have 40 silver pieces. Mwahahaha. There you go. All right, uh, silver. and Shaz, how how would you live? Uh, I think he's AFK. He mentioned nope, something nope, about grabbing nope, food. I am back. I've been back. He is back. Long. You know, he's it's like back. I can hear him sometimes. You know. <sighs> Never doubt. Normally, it would be a modest lifestyle. However, I got high and gave away the last of my money. So tonight, I am on a liquid diet. A fantastic. Okay. Uh, did anybody want to do any role play in the Yawning Portal, or would y'all like, or anywhere else in Waterdeep, uh, or would you like to end the day? Uh, I would like to get us a job. Okay. Uh, second, I'm just zooming out on the map so I can see better. I heard someone say Castle Hunter earlier. Dude, Let me. Like y'all can actually. Y'all discuss that. I have to use the bathroom real quick. What do you mean, no? No. But our poor goblin might lose his village. Yeah, and she's the only one those. not in the room right now. Oh, he owns a village. He hails from that village. He's a goblin. And the nobles have better stuff. Wine, food, art, all of it. Oh, I was gonna see if we can do more jobs for the, uh, the Gloomy Boys. Gloomy Boys? Yeah, you, you know, uh, what's the name? Um. The okay. Doom Eaters. Yeah, the Doom Eaters. Yeah, the Doom Eaters. I mean, I mean, what sort of work do they offer? Well, They're still working for a living. I don't see how they can offer to pay much. Uh, they, uh... You know, we've got wine for them. Yeah, we could be like their... their... I don't fucking know. Uh, the, the, like, tour... Muscle. Boun bouncer muscle, yeah. Yeah. Show them what's what, you know. I don't know, which Can is why I was asking. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, you know, you know, you will know. I don't think I know I will know. Do you know if I will know? Who do knows? Not know? I don't know if you know. Seems like you don't know. You know, I think he doesn't know. No, I know, but you don't know. So, am I gonna call you Scotty because you don't know? 
You both sound pretty confused. His, his name is Scotty. No, mm. we, we do the job for the Doom Raiders, right? And, uh, you know, they paid well. Nothing too shenaniganary. Shen, shen, you know, not, nothing's illegals. Deliver wines, we could do that. You know, be bouncers and... You know, I think I know. Oh, I think you know's new. Okay, guys, I am back. Hello, back on dad. Hey, dad. Uh, the All inspiration. Right. Oh, sorry, that, that was <laughs> my DM talking. You can't do that to me. <laughs> you're you're de inspirized. <laughs> All right. Did y'all decide on a group, or do you want me to kind of push you in a direction? Apparently, we're talking about Doom Raiders. We we be writing Doom Raiders. Dooms. The um. Okay. Um. Y'all have uh, the three people that did a mission for them have plus one renown with them. Um, I'm going to say that uh, Zaraj the Hunter uh, is here, even though she should be back at the Beer Golem. She's she's going to be here for now. Um, oh, I would have assumed we went to the Beer Golem to go talk to him. Yeah, well, y'all just left the Beer Golem, so we can say that y'all talked to him there. Okay, who wanted to approach, and which member did y'all want to talk to? Well. Oh, uh... Oh. Oh. Vinny Ow. and she, how... Sorry. How the, um... Uh, renown system works here is every faction has uh, a scale of plus three to minus three. At zero, they're neutral. At plus three, they're your best friends. At negative three, they'll kill you on sight. Uh, the crew yesterday did a small job for them. Lincoln, Huel, and Thorgren transported some wine from their warehouse to their bar. Uh, so they have plus one renown. But that does uh, not apply four. to us? No, because you did not assist with that. Fair enough. Yep. So, who wants to approach uh, the Doom Raiders, and which member do you want to approach? <sighs> All right. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Who wants yeah, to do it? Right. And she's not a part of this. He's still out back getting out of the dumpster. I'll fucking I'm talk. I'm having a right. down moment. I need a minute. I, yeah. Oh, I, I, I was uh, going to say, I could do it. Yeah. Too late. I uh, said I could me. Technically happened before y'all went back to the yawning portal, so Inchi, you're in here. You can interact with this. Shit. Um... <laughs> Uh, so who's going to do it? I heard I'm going to walk yes. up. Y'all can all go together. You can drag your own tokens. Who do you want to talk to? You have Zaraj the Hunter, Schema Weird Bottle, Istrid Horn, or Davil Star Song. Talk to the Hunter. The Hunter? The Hunter. She uh, looks you up and down. She slams her uh, mug on the wooden bar. Uh, you can feel the vibration of, uh, of the force of that in your very feet. Uh, and she looks at you and waits for you to say something. Hello. She nods. Nods at you. I nod back. She says, what do you want? Oh, what a job! Jobs, jobs. What do I look like? A, a, a bag of job holding? Actually, 
what are you trying to say? Oh, I'm saying you, you, oh, I'm saying you gave us a job last time. She says, <sighs> Give one job, start asking for more job. This is why Zaraj did not want to hire outsiders. Yes, yeah, okay. She says, Fine, I have job for you. There is men here trying to hire us to find his friend. I do not wish to do this. It sounds most boring. He is over there at the table. Go talk to him. Get him out of our bar. He talks too much. Oh, I don't see who she was. Oh, is she talking about Sad Boy McGee? No. Oh. Um, it is this person. Oh. Uh, she points over at a guy sitting at a table writing furiously on a piece of paper. He has a big billowy hat uh, and is wearing fancy, very fancy and multicolored uh, clothes. So, well, you, you just want us to get rid of him? Yeah, I don't like him. Get him out. I'm sure he'll pay you, too. Uh, uh, okay. I'm gonna stand up and walk on over to him. I'll uh, follow through once I see that <laughs> conversation going. Just a second. All right, sorry, folks. I fucking was walking downstairs, banged my head into the door frame, and that jostle has caused me to spring a leak. Oh, no. So I am going to fucking lie down and uh, just uh, not move. Because, uh, this, uh, yeah. Have you tried it's only slightly you? bleeding, but it is bleeding. So I'm going to, uh, have to dip. Okay, man. That's, that's completely fine. Thank you for trying. Uh, I hope you yeah. heal up nicely. Alright, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You feel better, man. It just See, die dude. quietly. No. I have to suffer, everyone else does too. This My dying words will be calling you a towel. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I guess I'll walk up to Buddy and uh, <clears throat> see if any of the party follows. Uh, I said I'll follow, so yeah. Okay, well. Uh, Gonna step up to the table, slam my hands onto said table, and see if he reacts. Uh, he reacts with a start. He goes, Oh, good sir. It is bad luck to interrupt a writer in the middle of his thoughts. A what? Uh... A writer. Uh, no. No. He holds nope. he holds out his hand and he says, Volothrop Gaddard, Chronicle, Wizard, and Celebrity at your service. I trust you've noted the violence in our fair city these past ten days. I haven't seen so much blood since my last visit to Baldur's Gate, but now I fear I have misplaced my friend amid this odious malevolence. Gonna stick my hand out as he's introducing himself. And you're getting thrown out! And I'm gonna try to pick him up onto my shoulders. Like a fireman. <laughs> he goes, what? What? No! Uh, roll a strength check. The I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna walk around. <laughs> and, 20? Uh, I'm gonna walk towards him while he's being carried around and says, So, uh, well, what are you writing there? Oi, you asked don't, him what he, don't, what he was don't. what he was writing. 
Yeah, like, obviously while he's being carried and shit. You're not uh... meant to be talking to the people who be get kicked out. Uh, in his hand, he has the, the scroll he was writing on, and he's, like, hitting Thorgrim, and he says, By God, sir, put me down. Put me down, I say to you. No, I will uh, put you down when we get outside. Don't worry, I won't toss you. Unless you hit me again. Blink. Blink, and you could snatch that scroll while he's distracted if you wanted. I uh, don't want to, but uh, I just want to, like... You know, follow him through and see if, you know, something will happen besides this being thrown out. I don't know if he actually, if he actually have a job or not type of thing. Yeah. All right. So uh, he's actually sitting kind of next to the door, so it's really easy to pick him up and throw him out. Uh, Blink and roll a perception check. Well, I'm okay. not actually throwing him. I, 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 um, I, 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 I tossed him onto my shoulder like you uh, like a fireman would. And I stepped outside, and I'm just gonna like place him down. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm not that. Oh. Oh. Okay. So at that blinking, he's able to answer your question. Oh, okay. Okay. So uh, as he was being carried out, you noticed a word on the scroll. It said "Never Ember." Do you remember uh, uh, the name "Never Ember"? Barely. Yeah, that's the. Um, is that like the uh, New Year's Day thing? No, that's Founder's Day. Never, ended. never ember. It's somewhere up here in that long monologue I posted from Galanis. Specifically, the thing he said to you that you forgot. Let me repost it. Uh, Galanis said that uh, 20 years ago, Aranax disappeared. He said, I believe that the then open lord, Dagolt Neverember, lured Aranax to the Vault of Dragons, and there used evil magic to separate the serpent's soul and place it in, the, in a magic blue stone. The spirit of a great t creature was turned into a security mechanism and left in a box for Dagolt to come back to when the time was right. So Daggle Neverember is the guy that smuggled one million gold coins from Waterdeep's uh, economy and hid it away in the vaults of dragons and used that blue stone that has Aranax's soul in it to prevent anyone from being able to memorize details of the vaults of dragons. Yeah, I see it there. Okay. <clears throat> so um, with that, I would probably mention again, ask a... Sir, um, so what, what, uh, you know, what are you writing that makes you want to, you know, write in this lovely establishment there? And I'm like pointing at the, uh, you know, uh, beer golf. Well, I'm, I'm writing about my friend who has gone missing. I've been, I've been traveling up and down the city with him, visiting all the best bars while I get his life story. Uh, he seems to really open up at the taverns. It's a uh, Rainier Neverember, son of Dago Neverember. Uh, I was supposed to meet him here tonight, but he's never showed up. And he didn't show up to our meeting last night either. And he's never one to miss out on free drinks. I believe something has gone horribly wrong. Uh, this malevolence hangs over the city and it, and it strikes at my heart and I fear that the worst might have come true. Hmm, interesting. I, I know that name, never remember. Um, and, uh... Oh, yes. Quite a famous family. Yeah. En en encircled by drama, encircled by corruption. Brilliant stories. Family that passes all the way back to the beginning of Faerun. It will be my most marvelous bestseller. If only I can get my source back. Yes, if only. And I look at the party... And, um, kind of, I don't, I, I would think that I would mention who Never End Ember would be at, while I was researching the dragon, um, story from the library, right? So, mm -hmm. um, okay. you know. Everyone would have remembered everything that, that Galanis told y'all. Yeah. When, um, uh, everyone, uh, 
y'all shared memories when that curse was lifted on you. So all of you remember that big monologue. Of, yeah. Y'all should read that. There's a few hints in that. Uh, and I made sure that I said those things too during the session. Um, the only person that wouldn't know uh, that y'all are looking into Never Ember's hidden vault would be Thorgrun. So uh, uh, I'm like, well, where, where was, maybe we could help you. Where, I mean, have you gotten any ideas where this uh, Never Ember would be? Like, where's this last location? You know, what? You know, what, what what's the situation there? We were working our way through the Docksward taverns, uh, very shady neighborhoods, but they have some of the best imported ales. The bartenders there have their particular taste, having been former tradesmen or pirates or, or sailors themselves, they've traveled all over the Sword Coast. Uh, so we were working our way through there. We were supposed to, or the last place I saw him at was a place called the Skewered Dragon on um, uh, Candle Lane. The skewered dragon, huh? Skewered dragon, yes. Rainier, he does not flash around his family name, and he certainly is smart enough to not flash around his gold. I certainly hope that no one tried to rob him, or even worse, find out, found out who he was and kidnapped him for information. You know his family's estate was broken into a few months back. Hmm, quite. Well, let's you see. Know that he's referring to the night that Xanathar teleported to Never Ember Manor and stole that blue stone from Daggle Never Ember's possessions. I look at the party. I mean, I think, guys, I think you, uh, we, we, we should help this, this, uh, Never Ember out. Um, it seems to be a, uh, well, hopefully we can find something. I mean, uh, we don't want it to, anything to be tragic or anything like that. Uh, and she was looking up at the stage the whole time, and he turns back and says, uh, what? Is, is there gold in it? That is a good question. Are, are, are you going to compensate us for this? Um, he says, uh, oh, oh, yes, uh, most, most assuredly, good sirs. Roll a perception check. Wait, yeah. what, what, what kind of job are you getting us into? Oh, well, says, I weren't listening. Yeah, that's a surprise. Let me, uh, yeah. roll. Got a 19. All right. Inchi and Blinken, uh, y'all can tell that he is lying. Hmm. He don't look like he'll pay me any gold. Ain't that right, uh, Mr. Mustache? It is follow Trump, God hard. And, and look, okay? The advance... On my Never Ember book, it hasn't quite come out yet. And and my sales of my book on the recent happenings in Baldur's Gate, uh, the shipments haven't reached me quite yet. I'm 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 hard out of gold to give away, boys. Uh, but per per perhaps there's something else I could give you. I do happen. Uh, I was hoping to invest in this, but desperate times. I have the deed to an abandoned manor somewhere in Waterdeep. Perhaps upon completion of the job. I could pay you with that. Mm. Could, this, could this manor fit 60 goblins? What? Why on earth would you put goblins in a manor? Because we're half the size of these dang elves, and he points to Shaz. So I mean, you could fit, like, 
double of us. Like, you could fit 30 elves into a manor. Could you fit 60 goblins into a manor? No, 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 not what I mean. I mean, why would you put a goblin in a manor? Well, why not? It's a place to eat. It's a place to go number one and go number two and go number eat. It's all you need. There's a free place to stay. Well, or relatively. you can turn it into, you know, a business. You know, oh, that's a good point. Make money, legitimately. That way maybe we... Have... Maybe we combo the ideas together. We get the goblins, get a business, make the goblins work for us. There you go. Yeah, Sorry, I don't, like, I don't like that make word you're using, but yeah, we can make what? a little goblin business. How about that? Why, why would we make goblins work for us? Well... You know, there's more, um... You're not gonna make goblins work for you, that is for certain. But, Mr. Mustache, can you fit 60 goblins into this manor? What are we talking about here? Say no. I assume if you were creative with your spacing and placement of everybody where they, uh, sleep, and if you could... It has a full-service kitchen, uh... Uh, I'm not sure if it's hooked up to the sewer wards or to the sewer guild's new lines, uh, but uh, the street sweepers guild would pick up the dump buckets every day. You could fit as many goblins as you want in there. Okay, mm -hmm. so no, we we we'll, we'll take the uh, we'll, we'll take the hoose, right? We'll turn it into a brewery. Either way, I... we're, we're, we're I think we're okay in doing this job, uh, Mister. What was it, Volo? Is that good? Follow Thrump Gadard. Okay, Volo it Waterdeep is. And you don't know my name. I've I read mean, the definitive history of Waterdeep. I, 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 I did read some books, yes, but regardless, um, I, I, I don't really know how to pronounce your name, so Volo it is. Uh, Mr. Thump. What? He's a, Follow he's... Thrump. Yeah, Mr. Thump. My last name is Gadard. Volothrump Gadard. Okay, Mr. Thump. So, um, what's this job again? You're gonna find my friend Rainier. He's gone missing. Oh, okay. Also, just so you know, you kind of pissed off one of the uh, uh, entrepreneurs of, uh, of uh, this inn. So, you know. I wish we'll do the job. You just can't go back in. I wish the Doom Raiders would let me do a, a book upon the, on their history. Oh, those scrolls would fly off the shelves. Oh, well. I'll see if Durnan can give me uh, a free room at the inn. Yeah, head over there. Yeah. Uh, if y'all ever need me, I'll be at the Yawning Portal. Do you know where that is? Uh, yes, been there. Okay. Done that. Alright, and, uh, he walks off into the you night. Know, you know, he kind of weird. Well, he's offering us a home, and I am willing to do anything to do to get that manor. So, I'm down. I mean, yeah. Especially since uh, it's never ember, remember. Never shmamber. And I whisper quietly, it is the one that, you know, well, the family that uh, is responsible for a million old disappeared, and maybe we could access that. Maybe. Oh. Uh, Thorgren, when you wouldn't have, he said that he whispered it, so you wouldn't have heard that. Oh. Yeah, you wouldn't know it yet. That's why. Yet. Yeah, the rest of you remember that Lord Rainier Neverember, when he was Open Lord, embezzled one million gold coins and hid them in the Vault of Dragons, and then magically sealed away the ability to be able to remember the Vault of Dragons. You four seem to be the only people that know of its existence other than Xanathar, the Castle Lanterns, and the Doom Raiders. 
Okay, now, uh, crew, I woke up a little late today, so I have to ask, who is this dwarf? I, I do not remember him. You know, yeah, that he's... brings up a good question. Why has just got a goblin following you? Don't Why do we got a dwarf me? telling me what to do, huh? Don't got a pest problem, do you? Listen, he's no, a new guy. He's part of the crew. <laughs> He's he's finding his place. He's he's trying to figure out where he fits. Yeah, it's my boot up your butt. It's where it fits. I say you lovely. Know, you, you know, if you could even reach there. He technically does outrank you, um, Dorgan. And she was here first. Yeah, know your place, shorty. Uh, I don't know. Height makes right. And I am the I'm walking. You look like a normal portal. person, but short. <laughs> uh, goblins are short, and to begin with, you, you are the weird one here, sir. You look like the inside of an ox bottle. And you look like my mom when she doesn't shave. Uh. Oh, I bet your mom looks great then. She does. I he like you. He just said his mom looked great. Should we be concerned? I'm still walking towards the yawning portal. As y'all are walking towards the yawning portal. Uh huh. Oh, yeah, while, while just walking towards the yawning portal, you say, I'm allowed to love my mom, you. You. Fuck you. <laughs> Alright, as y'all walk along. Uh huh. No, no good. As y'all walk along, y'all are right behind Volothrop. Uh, he quickly realizes y'all are going to the same place as him, uh, and he joins you. If y'all wanted to ask any questions about the history of Waterdeep, he would be the guy that knows. Um, so y'all can do that or not. So, uh, Mr. Thump. Mm -hmm. What's with the yes, funny hat? Boy. He says, this hat is a famous... Uh, Gadard family tradition. It looks like you got a flower bag on your head. He says, it is most certainly a sign of sophistication and grace. I guess that you wouldn't know, seeing as you don't seem to have a shirt on at all. Oh, no, I do. You do? Just can't see it under my beard. I'm going to lift my beard and you're going to see a very worn shirt. With many holes in it. Yeah. He goes, I guess that is technically a shirt, my boy. By definition. Alright. Did y'all want to ask him any questions about Waterdeep or no. any of the lore or anything? Hey, you got any stories about the sewers? There's so many. Stories or sewers? Ah, yes, the sewer is one of Waterdeep's most crowning achievements. Achieving something yeah. called indoor plumbing about a century ago. Marvelous, marvelous creation. It is why I've made my home here. Uh, not even Mithra's mighty magic uh, could come up with such a wonderful invention. Do not tell her I said that. Um, <laughs> she's, uh, he says, it is said that the sewers are older than the, si that the sewer system is based off a series of caves that are older than Waterdeep itself. It is said that a clan of beholders known as the Xenathar dug them over the centuries, back when Waterdeep was nothing more than a pirate's trading hub. As such, they have entrances into Skullport, and it is said that some of the sewage flows down into the Undermountain itself. Ah, huh. I just like to swim in it, but that's pretty cool. Hmm. He goes, oh, e excellent. Does the sewage get deep enough to swim in many places? I mostly oh. just doggy paddle, and my stomach just grazes the surface, but it it's, it's refreshing enough. Okay, all right. Anybody else? <laughs> At the mere mention of <clears throat> the Xanathar, you see Huel start to get, like, scared. <clears throat> He's hiding behind Thorgan, and he's going to ask, like, 
is the stuff they say about them true? Like, are they crazy and stuff like that? Xanathar? Oh, my boy. Like any beholder, he is mad. All ten eye stalks of his are, are surrounded in paranoia. When I was interviewing him for Wallow's Wal Wal Deep in Kyridian, he told me all kinds of stories of various members of his crew that he slew, slain, and petrified himself. With no proof of their treachery, he accused them of trying to kill him or infest him with nightmares. The holders are very paranoid creatures. They reproduce through their dreams. So if a beholder dreams of another beholder, that beholder comes to life and kills the person that created it. The entity known as Xanathar is only the latest in a long line of many Xanathars, and it is said that the skulls of those previous uh, Xanathars haunt the sewers and Skullport to this day. Oh, you, you, are you mean like uh, when when they dream of their doom that like they uh, uh turn into uh, what were they called tyrants? Death tyrants, yes. Oh, yeah. The skull, the skull of a beholder never dies, even after its soul leaves. I saw a lot of statues down there in the guild. Is that what you mean by petrify? Oh, you've been to the thieves' guild as well. Yes, I have seen Xanathar's hall of petrified traitors. Certainly, something I never wish to lay eyes upon again. Oh yeah, they, they, that made me go number two whenever I saw him. But, uh, uh, yeah, he's kind of scares me. I gotta visit him soon, though. I, I'm, guys, I'm scared. You might, can someone hold my hand when I do that? Yeah, he'll scare too. He grabs him and, like, he's, like, visibly shaking. Uh, ah, yeah, why, yeah. Why, 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 why are you shaking? Stop that. Like, his head, his, his whole body. Yeah, you didn't like... hear about the statues? You ain't never walked beho beside a, uh... You, you never walked with a beholder before, have you? I got... I mean... Oh. One of them, like, spoke with their mind, and that could have been, like, the the dreaming thing. I think he's trying to reproduce with me. That's even scarier. Oh, beholders don't reproduce some people. Yeah, they are a legend. No, what they do... They suck your brain out through your nose, and then they turn you into a puppet. It's even uh, worse. I, hu I uh, hug Huel closer, and I'm like, no! Not Shut my up. brain! He grabs his head, he's like, like... shaking. He's grabbing his head, and she's like, no, Xanathar, no! Oh, yes. In the world, he turns you into a puppet. He sells you to the lowest pair. That way, he's I, guaranteed I... an income. I won't be a doll thing. I won't. Mm. We won't. We won't. No, no, no. So. It's we will. Because, you know, you can't really stop them. Dwarf, where did you come from? Can you go back to where you were? You're scaring me. Uh, Bolo Thramp orders himself a honey mead and something called the Yawning Pork Tall, uh, and pork he waits tall. for his food. Pork Tall, some kind of pork dish named after the Yawning Portal. Mm -hmm. uh, does anybody else want to do anything tonight? It's about midnight. Uh, Y'all can talk to other factions, or you can end the day. Uh, Lincoln will just go... Yeah, whatever he can lead, and then go uh, up to um, the room and just kind of, you know, take care of Dragon a little bit, just make sure he knows um, he's there type of thing, right? So. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to say that the living room here is y'all's room that you have for four more nights. Okay. Um, Thorgren, what about you? Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go see if I can collect my money from, uh, what's-her-face. Seeing how I just threw Volo out. Uh, when you did that at the bar, she would have handed you a free mug of beer from the bar as payment. 
Hey, well, that's not what I wanted. Y'all never agreed on a price. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. But, like... Not nice. You're getting a job from Volo. <laughs> Alright, what did you want to do tonight? Uh, nothing, I guess. That's just what it's going right. to be. Going to take you to the room? Actually, you have your own room. Uh, that Milton would have paid for. Uh, you can stay with the crew, or you can stay in that room that Milton paid for. Uh, I'm going to the room Milton paid for. Alright. I'm, I'm not sharing right. a room. Alright, he got you a room uh, over here. It's longer than it is wide, uh, but that still leaves it kind of spacious. You have room to walk around and stretch. Um, you get your own bed to yourself. Uh, there is a series of baths uh, on the second floor that you can use. Um, Inchi, what did you want to do tonight? Uh, Inchi goes up to the room that is uh, paid for. But uh, he talks to the folks in there saying, that 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 bald Thor guy is going to give me nightmares from the Xanathar. Why are we hanging out with him? You don't uh, trust me. You don't trust bald people. Kill, You're gonna what hear, did you want to do tonight? Going to hear singing from down the hall. Oh, oh. I am bald and it is great. <laughs> I'll hear that as he's saying, you can't trust bald people, and I'll be like, listen, ever since Destry left, we, we need an extra hand, so. He may be bald, but we, we can trust I him for knew, now. I knew there was supposed to be two two tall guys. Where did that guy go? I don't know, he left his bird here, and I'm gonna, the raven's going to come flying in. I guess that's the important oh. part. Oh, well. Yo, it's after midnight. In three days, you owe 25 gold pieces. I check the sundown. I'm like, oh, it is three days on, on his wrist. Just look at that. <laughs> sundial. <laughs> Even though there's no sun. <laughs> three days. By the candlelight, you're like, hey, by my thing, it says five days. Move a little bit. Oh, it's daylight savings. You know, I got three days of cutting off. <laughs> I'll be sure to pay it. I'll tell the Raven. Uh, Shazelfrad is in here. He is passed out dramatically on the couch with a bottle of wine in his hand. Yeah, that checks out. All right. We will say that that ends the day. Everybody took their gold off for expenses, correct? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Fantastic. Y'all awake the next morning. Uh, Thorgren, this is your last night in this room. Uh, everybody else in the room Galanis paid for. You got three more days, which means two more nights in this room. Or I'll just say three more nights, since that's all I've been doing it. Three more nights in this room. Y'all wake up. It is about 8 a.m. Uh, the yawning portal is open, but not very busy right now. What would y'all like to do? They're open, you um, said, or they're, they're not open yet? Yeah, they open uh, when the sun comes up. I would go get me some ratatouille for breakfast. <laughs> ratatouille for breakfast. Oh, That's what shit. it says on the, the light menu. <laughs> Egg bread, fruit mix, and it's ratatouille. <laughs> One says, uh, the ratatouille, sir, it takes a couple of hours to cook. Are you sure you want to order that for breakfast? I will order it for lunch. I'll order it for lunch. Steaming vegetables. We'll I will get it, it for lunch. <laughs> I do look forward to it. I will take the oatmeal for now, then. Okay. <clears throat> um, fantastic. Um, yeah, so first, first thing. Oh, sorry. Um, as y'all all kind of file into the yawning portal to start your day with tea, water, coffee, whatever you want. Um, 
Mm, we'll say that eventually all the faction people show up here if you want to talk to them. They kind of come in one by one. Uh, Volothrump is here at his table in the corner already starting his day with writing. Um, uh, Bonnie says, uh, oh, um, I was kind of waiting for Galanis to come back, but uh, since y'all are in his room, can you give him this for me? And she hands y'all a small sealed envelope. Uh, it's an envelope of folded parchment with a wax seal where all the folds meet. Uh, and she snatches it and says, of course, Bonnie, anything for you. <laughs> and uh, and she winks at her. <laughs> <laughs> a, a friendly way or like a flirting way? Uh, very flirty. <laughs> roll for that dude? Oh, God. <laughs> roll the wrist? What is that, a persuasion? Charisma check. Charisma. Oh. Huh. Better than I thought. Fourteen. Well, what a lovely way to start the day. Thank you, and she And she pushes uh, uh, a cup of coffee towards you uh, and doesn't charge you for it. <laughs> ah, as my girl. And, uh, and she just gulps the coffee. Um, as she walks away, um, um, she, I guess she wouldn't know this, wouldn't she? Um, yeah, she just walks away. Um, okay. In that envelope, uh, what do you want to do with it? It was for Galanis. Also, Galanis's dead body has been in the briefcase of holding for a day now. Y'all should probably do something about that. Uh, with him. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know with... what we can do with him. What's that, Dorgan? Oh, just go down to the dock and toss him in the water. Not a bad yeah, idea. He'll, he'll sink. I mean, Glennis was our friend, question mark? Oh. <laughs> he already paid us. He's no longer our, you know, friend. I mean, I mean, he's a corpse, actually, not your friend. Like, and can I do, like, a history check? Was he our friend before the job? No. Because if, okay, if not, yeah, then, yeah, let's take him down to the docks. Yeah, if he had more gold for us, yeah, he'd be my friend. But no, he's dead. You know, if if that was me in that bag of holding, I wouldn't want anybody to waste any gold dragons on my business things, you know? You could just dump them in the water and save save the coin. Exactly. I'm going to open this up and see what uh, our dead Galani guy, uh, what he, what his last message would have been. And, uh, oh, and she uh, rips open you. the letter and reads it. Okay. Inchi, uh, you also took Galanis's black ten-gallon hat off of his body. Are you wearing that? Um. Sure. Why not? Why not? Okay. Um. So you would be wearing that. Um. Can we say that you guys told Thorgrim everything? Yeah, like we laid it out. Like Galanis hired us, and everything happened. All right. Uh, while y'all were trying to explain this to him, he had a hard time remembering what y'all were saying, and he realized that he was under the same memory spell that the rest of you were under. Lincoln, your dragon was attracted to him as he kept trying to remember these things he had just been told. Eventually, your dragon ran up to him and tapped him on the head with his forehead. Thorgrim, at that, you were able to remember everything that your friends were telling you about the Vault of Dragons and its one million gold coins. That happened last night, so y'all are all caught up today. Okay? Mm -hmm. Alright, Inchi, you open up this envelope, and inside is a golden key. Nothing else? Nothing else. Just a golden key. Uh, the bottom of it, uh, it looks very small and decorative. The bottom of it just looks like a normal key, but the top of it is some kind of winged angel looking creature. Uh, and she holds up the key to the rest of his crew and says, how much do you think I can sell this for, huh? It's like pure gold and it, it looks fancy. I bet I can sell this for like 15 gold. Maybe 20. 
We, we may need to we keep all... that. Yeah. Uh, this strikes you as very similar to the keys that Galanis would put in that small golden box when the keys were insulted into the golden box. Um, um, it played a small voice message from someone. Uh, and that's how y'all got the that's how y'all got the mission briefing about the the museum heist. Mr. Blinky, are you saying you want this? Because I don't know who to sell this to. And I'll I'll, I'll take it, you know, just in case. Okay. And dwarf, have this hat. Your your baldness is scaring me. And I placed the hat on uh on uh, Thorgan's head. Uh, Thorgan, you're now wearing a like little ten gallon uh, hat. I'm nice. gonna open the briefcase of holding and put it in there. Okay. Uh, you get a little uh, smell of uh, mm. Alanis's day old body in there. It's not strong yet, but it smells like really sharp bo body yeah, odor. You you know, if you're going to be carrying that around, you should just uh. Wait, we're we're in the well in the tavern. Gonna look at the yeah. the well total like well not well in the middle of the uh the area. Oh my god. Oh. I, Why are we gonna put a picture? Of the... can, can 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 I can I see the briefcase? Um. I don't know who had it in their inventory, but if y'all want to give it to them, you can. What are you going to do with this briefcase? Oh, I'll deal with the problem. How? Look, do you want it dealt with or not? Uh, 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 I look at the party. Uh, do, 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 you, do, do, do you want this dealt with right now? Uh, he can't pay me anymore, so I don't care. Deal with him as you wish. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, how do we get into the well? Is it the lift? Yeah, there's a lift, and then like. It's literally just a big old hole in the ground with a little oh. railing around it to prevent you from tripping into it. I'm going to uh, hop onto the lift and ask for a ride down. It's literally just a lever that you pull yourself. I pull the lever. <laughs> you ride 140 feet down to the first layer of the Undermountain. Uh, the is there a litter? Uh, I assume this first area just kind of looks like a brown generic cave. I don't have the fucking undermountain. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's about. fine. So the plan is I'm going to wander around till I come across literally any monster, dump the body, and run. Just a second. Man, I'm gonna have to pay for that. I don't even know what kind of monsters would be uh, in the Undermountain. <laughs> Should get the Dungeon of the Mad Mage book. I want to play that so bad. It would make for a good follow-up to this campaign. I 
I, I, I don't even know what would be down here. Um, let's say you see uh, some slow moving microns, some mushroom people that live in caves. Uh, you see them far off in the distance. Microns? Microns, yes. Oh, I thought you said mic. <laughs> I thought you meant myconids for a second. Um. Fuck, what are microns? I don't even know. They're like mushroom people. So, oh. like mushrooms. Like, they eat decaying flesh, you know? Giant, like, just wandering mushrooms? Yeah, mushroom humanoids. Uh, I'm going to... Just... Not... Be aggressive and walk by them. Or, you know, get close to them and see what happens. Uh, they would stop and look at you. I'm going to stop and look at them. They have spears and stuff. I have my maul. <laughs> and a briefcase. Okay, dude, what do you want to do here? <laughs> well, it depends. Are they being aggressive? What do you want to do here? At you? I'm going to just go over to the opposite side of the hallway and just walk very nonchalant, try to get past them. They watch you go by. I I go by. <laughs> fuck. Okay, in the next room, nine bugbears, five of them under the control of intellect devourers, are in the room. What do you do? I open the briefcase, pull out Galanis, rage, and toss him as far as I can, and rage, and fucking run. <laughs> That way I, I get the strength roll. bonus to tossing him. Fucking hard. Roll a strength check. Let's go. Throw, throw his ass all the way across. 26 okay. again! Hell yeah. Motherfucker. Just nat 20s okay. all night. <laughs> Alright, so you throw him deep into the room and you haul ass back the way you came. You find the elevator to the undermountain and there's a lever that you can pull to send yourself back up. I pull the lever. Alright. I need to write this down. Code. Galanis. Who. Bug. Bears. Alright. Fantastic. Okay. And you are back in the yawning portal. Right. Um. Th this ain't it. Nope. Mm -mm. I'm gonna go back to the boys and sit down. <laughs> yep. Is dealt with. Uh, I don't even want to know Lies. how. Okay. Oh, bug bears. Okay. I haven't even gotten my ratatouille yet. You 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 already did it. What the? <laughs> oh, oh, uh, a a a and uh, intellect uh, devourers. Yeah, he was he was down there for like. 30 minutes, max. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Better do bugs and bears? Nice. And I no, uh, no, hold no, up my no. hand for a high five. No, bug bears. Yeah, bugs and bears, right? No. And I still okay. hold my hand up for a high five. I just sigh really loudly. No, bugs. <laughs> bears. One word. Yeah. What are you actually for? Bugs and bears. I get it. Okay. Y'all are all in the living room. Uh, you have this job from Volo. You have this golden key. Kill, you know your cart is out back and it needs to be fixed before it could be usable. Um, Inchi, you owe five gold pieces to the city in three days. Mm. Kill, you owe 25 pieces in three days. And that's it. What would y'all like to do? Oh, Blinken, you should probably go to work at some point. Yeah, I, I mean, I think at some point I'll, I'll head over there, but, like, it depends on if we're actually going to go and check out this uh, lead with Bolo's little thing. Okay. I don't so know what, what would you like to do? I don't know what time it is. Is it a proper hour to go pay my fine? 
It's like, uh, yeah, 9 o'clock. You would just go to the nearest guard post, and you can go right there. All right, and she heads that way. All right. Hmm. When you get there and pay it, they ask for your ID. They look hey. you up in the list of people that owe money to the city. They take note of the five gold coins you get them, and they say, your debt to the city has been released. You stay yeah. on your best behavior. Or next time, yeah. the fine could yeah. be tripled. Yeah, yeah, I get it. And, uh, and she waves him off and walks off. Okay. Y'all are all in the yawning portal. What do y'all want to do? Oh, uh, Lincoln looks at the, the party, you know, once everything's settled and be like, well, shall we do this thing for Volo or should I just go to work? You also have that golden key. Yeah, do we have the box for that? Yeah, it would have been in Galanus's inventory. Oh, yeah, that's true. We can open this up real quick to see what it's about. Well, it doesn't matter what order we do this, right? Go to work, open this thingy, get the manor that I really need. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, Let me it, go it ahead and pull matter. out the chest and open the chest. All right. It is a small golden cube that can fit in your hand. It is completely uniform and flat on all sides except for one, where it has a small keyhole. You insert this key into that keyhole, and you hear the following. Greetings, operatives. An ally of the Golden Vault named Variety Kai has had her life savings stolen from her by her devious gam by a devious gambling partner and Xanathar the Beholder. We have found an opportunity to right this wrong and make headway on our quest to the Vault of Dragons. This quest, should you choose to undertake it, requires you to infiltrate the Afterlife Casino and steal a statuette as well as a lot of gold. Meet with Variety at the Brine Window Tavern to learn more details. You have two weeks to do this. Good luck, operatives. And then a few seconds pass, and you hear that voice say, Gal, I haven't received any messages from you. Is everything going all right with the new team? And then the message ends. Well, <laughs> it's not going so well, is it? No, it's not. So well, this means we got a new job, right? Technically, if we accept it, yeah. Sooner or later, though, we might have problems because I don't know how we would relay anything about our uh, missing friend, Galanis. Yeah, it seems like getting oh. the manor would be smarter, right? <laughs> Place. Well, I, I mean, we, we tell them the truth. But we have two yeah, weeks. We, we have two weeks till this is, you know, gone or whatever. We tell him the truth. He went into uh, the mountain, got eaten by bugbears, and that was it. Hmm. Yeah, he I mean, tripped and fell in the well. We we saw it happen. Yeah, How sure. Was that? So. Um, since y'all wanted a heist that you could plan a little bit longer, I kind of moved up uh, one of these later game uh, heists I was going to do to right now. Uh, it was supposed to be just right now focusing on Volo, but I decided to also have this heist going on. Uh, neither are time sensitive. You have two weeks to do this casino heist because you're robbing it on opening night, which is in two weeks. Um, and then Volo really doesn't have any leads on where his friend is, so you need to take the time to investigate that. You can do both of these side by side. Uh, I imagine it'll be a few sessions of planning and gathering information uh, before you figure out what to do with either of these. 
and we'll also go get more side jobs from the Doom Raiders. Oh, did I get rep, by the way? No. It was, it was a scam. She blinked her orky eyes at me, and I fell for her. Damn it. All right, gang. If you want to follow this cube, it's up to you. But I, I'm going to help Volo and get this manor for, uh, for all of us, right? So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow up that. If any, if if any of you want to help me, that is just fine by me. I mean, yeah, well, this cube thing. You know, technically, like, like, like it said, it's two weeks from now, so. Um, right, we could, and we, we got less than that. that. And we got less than that to find a new place to sleep, you know? Yes, I, I, I get that. But I'm saying we don't have to use this um, cube thing as a priority right now. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with going with this manner idea. Um... You know, at the same time, we could look into information as well for the, the cube, the, you know, um, so, um, either way, I'm, I'm okay with it. I'll, I mean, I'll follow you, uh, and she, and then maybe I'll head to work as well. Yeah, let's yeah, get this manor. Yeah, get us a manor. We all down for that? Hell yeah. All right, so who's doing what? Well, I guess we uh, can talk to Volo, right? See if we can get more leads, maybe. Um, I mean, the only thing he told us is go to that uh, tavern, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, did he even give us a name for his friend? Rainier Neverember. Yeah. Got it. Just a second. I'm going to change the name of the bar that the message told you to make it someplace that's in Waterdeep. Instead of the brine window, it is the blushing mermaid. Yeah. And then Volo said that his buddy was last seen. At a bar uh, called Shit. That's a lousy name for a bar. The Skewered Dragon. Got it. Okay, I want to do okay. something and DM. You have to ask me, or you have to tell me if you know I cannot do it. Mm -hmm. Uh, I want to put up a illusory script, and I'm going to cast this on uh. Like, you know, the the town banner or whatever on the street that shows, you know, newspapers, all of that. I'm going to cast a illusory script, and the message on it does not show to guards of Waterdeep. But it will show to everyone else, uh, have you seen this man? And it describes the uh, name of the man we are looking for, the reindeer guy. Okay. Um, illusory script. It lasts for 10 days. <laughs> Oh, that's sick. 
Okay, yeah, yeah man. That's and, crazy. Uh, where did where did you want to post that? Uh, I don't know if you ever played Dragon Age, but uh, I assume there's a, you know, just a board where everyone nails papers into something, you know, like town flyers and stuff. That's exactly where I plan to put it on a on a main street where everyone can pass by it and see it. But guards cannot read the same message. It will just say, uh, "Have you seen my uh, mommy?" That's what the guards will read. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I say hey. that you can do that. What's up? I'm gonna actually head out. I'm getting such a bad headache, I can't keep my eyes open. Oh, no, man. I hope you feel better. Yeah, sorry. I was going upstairs to get some Advil, and I'm like, hopefully this will help, and I got back down here, and I'm like, no, I need I need to go lay down. Hopefully you feel yeah, better, man. man. That's, that's, that's tough. Yeah. yeah, I guess it's that time of year, man. Everyone's coming down with it. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, we we all kind of are. Yeah. All right, but I I've had fun tonight. And I appreciate the game so far. So good. Catch you guys next week. I see nice you, week. dude. Peace. Oh, yeah. Baba boy. <laughs> oh, we finally managed to ban Brax. Oh, I can breathe now. Okay, I'm going to bring some order to this chaos. Everybody roll initiative. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's on me. I should have asked this like 30 minutes ago. I am glad everyone beat me because I need to pee. Be right back. Fantastic. All right. <clears throat> Lincoln. You and then Inchi. Okay. So we'll just go in order. But if y'all want to travel with each other, just say so. And we'll let y'all travel with each other. Lincoln. You have this mission from Valo. You have this mission from the Golden Keys. And then you have the ability to uh, start pursuing more factional relationships or do research. Um, you know that this uh, next heist is going to involve breaking into a casino that Xanathar seems to be involved with. Uh, what would you like to do today? Well, I was going to tag along with um, Inchi to see if you know, maybe his efforts would be easier to uh, look into that, uh, the, uh, what do you call it, the Skewer Dragon uh, quest. So, like, maybe if he needs somebody, uh, not a okay. goblin, to talk to. Yeah, yeah. All right, so you tag along with him. Yeah. So that means you'll be going... You'll be going down to the docks ward with him, uh, which is great because you know that other bar, the sea maid, the blushing sea maiden, is also in the docks ward. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, okay Huel, what did you want to do? Same thing. I'll I'll tag along and help Inchi with his business, get the manor. All right. So we're all together, right? Mm-hmm. Huel, are you bringing your dra or Blinken? Are you bringing your dragon creature with you? Um, yeah, same, same, same thing. I'm just kind of making sure I seal them as best as I could. If you wanted to, you could probably spend some money on like a custom made uh leather pouch that he could like sit in. Oh that yeah, you could, true. Like, zip up or something. Yeah, that, that I could do. Yeah. Or again, you could come up with some convincing lie uh, to tell people about him, or cast a spell on him to make him look like something else. It's up to you. Yeah, I don't have that spell. So I, I think I'll, I'll get like a a leather bag for him, and then I'll just kind of you know make sure he zips up to a point where he has air and like nobody really can see what's going on in there. This tree's bird will fly in. 
I was like, couldn't we just take some of his feathers and put them on him and say he's a bird? Hmm. I mean, I don't think that'll work too well with this, uh... He doesn't really fly anyway. He, he, he's just a baby. That's a fair point. He'll grow soon. Give him some time. Just one second. Yeah, I missed some of that. Am I the baby in the situation? What I miss? Oh, that's the dragon that I have. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Um. Okay. So y'all are going to all. Going to the skewered dragon. Um, I'm trying to say uh, every location is an actual place that I can find on the Waterdeep map so that y'all can go to that interactive map that I have um, and be able to find out where these things are. Um, so the skewer dragon is in the dock ward on Fillet Lane. Let me bring y'all over there. Draw a little circle for it for right now. Okay, so this red dot here is uh is the skewered dragon let me pull up the book real quick Oh, I didn't uh, specify for the illusory script that uh, and she put up. Uh, if anyone does have information about the uh, guy we're looking for to meet us at the yawning portal, so okay. that would be that would be the meetup spot. Unless specified otherwise. I'm okay. Just a second, guys. I need to look something up real quick. No problem. Okay, so as y'all are walking along the streets of the dock ward, uh, it's a little bit harder to navigate. Uh, even here in the daytime, uh, it's hard to navigate because street signs have been purposely knocked over. Uh, uh, building signs have been graffitied over or worn away with time. Uh, you notice that there are some signs for businesses uh, out on the street, but the lot behind them is an empty empty barren lot of gravel or grass uh, so it's kind of hard to make your way through as you're walking along you pass by a big uh, manhole cover and she you would recognize it as an entrance down into the sewers 
and as y'all are walking by it, it begins to move and rattle, and suddenly it's pushed open and thrown aside as a bugbear crawls out of it. It reaches down and extends its hand, and it says, Come on! Come on! And then it pulls up a kinku and sets it on the ground next to it. You notice that kinku is wearing a purple bandana, and the bugbear has a purple bandana tied around its wrist. The bugbear is reaching down into the sewers, and it says, Get up here! Get up here now! Get away from that! What do you do? Uh, and she waves. Hello! Look at this cloth I got! And, I, and she waves the purple uh, Xanathar guild rag that he, I, I assume he still has. Yes, you would still have it. Uh, at that, the kinku begins waving at you and says, Alert! Alert! Help! Help! And starts waving you over towards it. Uh, and she runs over and it's like, uh, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? I'll pull this guy up. Uh, and Stop then she him. just... Good. The bugbear says, some imps and devils began attacking our men down there in the sewers. Get down there and help them out. Oh. Do I got it? Uh, um, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, and, and she kind of hops down into the sewers and see what's going on. Okay. Blinken and Heal, do y'all follow Inchi down into the sewers? I mean, I, I, I guess I'll, uh, you know, kind of shrug at Heal and be like, well, I guess we, uh, you know, we'll see what's down there. Heal, you're fine with going down there? Seal will be back in a minute. All right, let me load up this battle map. Uh, I look back at Blinken and uh, Heel whenever they jump down and say, uh, Guys, my outfit doesn't smell like soup anymore. It doesn't smell like soup. Yeah, it smells like shit. I know. It's a sad day. Okay, y'all come down here into the sewers. I can't tell you pull the imp over. There we go. All right, so when y'all get down into the sewers, you can see that there is one bugbear down there who is being attacked uh, by these two winged imps. The imps are attacking it with their claws and uh, whispering or and screaming uh, confusing words at it, much like Destry's Raven likes to do. Um, we'll keep the same initiative order that y'all have, um, which was... All right, so Blinken, you would get to go first. What do you do? Um, I'll probably uh, look at the just north end since it looks like you know the bugbear is getting attacked by them. So the one, the northern one, I'm just gonna you know be like, hey, stop that, and I'm gonna shoot at that imp. 
go ahead and roll a dexterity check. Fifteen or thirteen, sorry. Thirteen to hit. All right, its armor class is 13. Uh, so Ty goes to the defender that misses. It just barely flies out of the way. Uh, does your dragon get its own turn? Um, that's what I'm reading now. Yeah, I think for third level, yeah, it has its own stats. So um, he'll get to move around now. So he'll just jump out um, and start crawling. As a 40 foot speed, yeah, 40 foot speed. Okay. He'll go up to, I'll be like, go to the north one. And then, you know, the dragon's, you know, nodding. He'll go to the north and then he's gonna, he's gonna try to bite. So it's D20 plus five, right? Yeah, plus five. That is what, 14. 14 total. That hits. Yeah. Like fighting at this thing. Goes up, jumps at it. And it's going to be D6 plus 2. So four, 4 points of damage. All right. You have taken it down to 6 HP. And then, uh, there we go. When I do bonus action, I'll put a hunter's mark on 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 that same target. Okay. Uh, so that now. Oops. That's four. But um, activated. Show it. There you go. That ends my turn. All right. Fantastic. Kuehl, you are up next. Kuehl, are you back? Kuehl? Sorry, I just had to step away for a sec. What's the Kuehl? word? Did I die? Am I having now? Yes. Kuehl? Yeah, you're dead. Thought so. You're having a fight in the sewers. These imps are attacking these uh, kinku and bugbears. What do you do? I would run in there to save them. You know that the bugbears are members of the Xanathar's Guild. Help the other guys. Uh, all right. Who are you attacking? The, the imps or the bugbears? You're down here because uh, the bugbears are Inchi's friends from the Xanathar guild. Yeah, I'll, I'll be helping them. All I'm right. going to attack the imps. So you, your raven says, those are green imps. Fuck them. Get them. Yeah, that'll be exactly right, my cutting attack. words. Cutting words go up, but like, fuck them. Where did that All go? All right. That just does three damage. It's, it should be, yeah, I should have rolled for it. It should be uh, the, the chat button there next to the spell. So if you mouse over the spell, there's a chat bubble button. Like that. I'm showing. Just rolled the uh, cutting word. Yeah, but it should have a spell save DC on it, right? If you read it. Yeah, it would be whatever your spell save DC is. What is your spell save DC? Not even sure. 
um, you should know that from your character. It's whatever people have to roll to resist your spells. It's like, um, I think for a bard, I think it would be your charisma score plus, plus 10. Plus 8. Uh, plus proficiency. It's 8 plus proficiency plus um, yep. charisma. So, plus 16, 18. Uh, really? What, what's, your, what's your charisma at? Well, six. Plus six. Plus six? Okay. Another min-maxer. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, and what's your proficiency? So, two. Yeah, two. So, Eighteen. Plus... Wait, no, eight plus six is fourteen. Sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah. Sixteen. All right. Uh, let me use the bathroom real quick. Yeah. Okay. So the imp would roll. What, an intelligent save? Uh. Oh, you can use this as a reaction. It takes one of your bardic inspirations. Oh, you can... Oh, that's not the spell. I'm trying to do Vicious Mockery. Jeez. Oh, oh yeah. It's, it's in the wrong spot. Jesus. I'm using this D&D Beyond Importer thing. Okay, vicious mockery. That's a lot easier. Must make a wisdom saving throw. I'm so a wisdom girl. Is plus one. <laughs> so no, it did no. not uh, yeah. do it right. And we'll use your first damage roll there. So you did three damage to it. Yeah. This bird's talking Fantastic. trash. Fantastic. Yeah, you and the bird together are just like roasting it. Fucking green imp. Fucking green piece of shit. Looking like doo doo ass imp. Yeah. All right. Inchi, your turn. Inchi. Sorry, In I'm here. Inchi. In yeah, yeah, yeah. In I'm here. What's up? Uh, and she waves his uh, purple, uh, his purple whatever rag it is, at the bugbear and says, "Hey, hey, hey! You got one of these, huh?" Yeah, you can see it tied around his uh, his ankle. Oh, cool! And uh, he casts phantasmal force on the uh, imp that has the lowest damage done to it. Uh, go ahead and uh, 
activate that. Ooh. Phantasmal Force. Craft an illusion that takes fruit in the mind of a creature that you can see. Must make an intelligent saving throw. Its intelligence is plus zero. So it failed that. And what it sees is like a Dracula looking vampire coming after it right over the bugbear's wow. uh, shoulder and coming for it. Okay. And that's what it sees? Yes. While a target is affected by the spell, the target treats the phantasm as if it were real. It rationalizes any illogical outcomes. Roll 1d6 psychic damage. Okay, yeah, that's what I was looking for. Roll that for me, my man. Uh, I do not know where to roll that. 1d6 psychic? Am I just rolling a uh, 1d6? Yes, a d6. Just quick d6 on that uh, dice roller thing on the left. Got it. Two. That is two. Two. You have knocked one of these imps down to its last hit point, and it is terrified of the Dra Dracula that is going to suck its imp blood. Uh, you'll be all right, uh, Mr. Guild guy. Just hold on. I am returned. Yeah, the bugbear looks like it's taken a few swipes and claws away out of these, from these imps. Okay, that's your turn. Yes. Next, the imp is going to go. All right, and it is going to sting at the bugbear. It's going to roll an attack, and it adds five to that attack. It got an 11, so that fails. Uh, after that attack, the imp turns invisible. Next, the other imp is going to go, rolling a uh, sting attack. That one succeeded, so it does 1d4 plus 3 damage to the bugbear. So 5 damage to the bugbear. And then it also turns invisible. Next, it is the bugbear's turn. It swings wildly uh, in front of it, uh, trying to hit the now invisible creatures. So it is going to roll an attack with disadvantage against that weak one. But one of those... Ooh, a nat one. It fails completely and it slips backward and falls on the ground and is now prone. Roll 20. Fuck. All right, Blinken, it is back around to you. All right, so I'm going to draw my arrow again from my bow and try to... Um, I, I'm guessing the same target's still up barely, right? So I'm just going to shoot at that. Yep, uh, roll your attack with disadvantage. Mm-hmm. Ten that misses, yeah. That misses. Okay, heal. Your turn. Oh wait, my my dragon too. He's, he'll try to. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, your dragon gets to go. Yeah, Same we... thing. Roll with yeah. disadvantage. All right. Uh, so, a, a 
11 total. That misses. That misses. So blinking with your 10 and with your dragon's 11, both of those attacks miss. Inchi, your turn. Okay. Uh, is that one imp still under the spell of phantasmal force? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, while he's distracted with the image of the Dracula coming for him, Inchi would like to sneak up and stab the imp in the gut. Okay, so it is invisible right now, so you're kind of guessing at where it's going to be when your Dracula steps forward to scare it. Go ahead and roll an attack. Uh... It's so scared of your Dracula that its invisibility fades just a little bit. Go ahead and roll a normal attack. Alright. Is that a regular regular dice? Because I'm not seeing uh, seeing an option for attack. I mean, if yeah, you're on your... if there if you're on the uh, character sheet. You click on your weapon, but if not, you just hit the D20 and then plus whatever your modifier is for that. It's a D20 oh. of 9. Plus proficiency, which is 11 plus whatever your... What are you doing? Dagger, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you have, do you have any dexterity at all? Uh, dexterity? No, zero. What about your strength? Uh, strength, zero. No, oh, just an 11. All right, that misses. Sorry, man. Even as it's invisible, you, uh, or even as it fades into visibility just for a minute, you can't see it. <clears throat> yeah, where'd you go? It's now the monster's turn. Uh, the imp is going to roll against the phantasmal creature. It tries to oh, attack yeah. it. He, he gets a d6 from the, that end turn, too, right? Oh, yeah. So go yeah, ahead and roll the d6. Inchi. Got a five. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's a good hit. You take that bad boy off the board. The imp uh, turns into ash and fades away. So does your phantasmal creature. Okay, it's now the other imp's turn. It's going to try and attack the bugbear again. Is that plus five? So 14, it misses. The bugbear spends its turn getting back up. Blinken, what would you like to do? Um... Hold on, let me see. Also, the imp turned invisible after it attacked. Well, I'm going to try to shoot where I think the imp is um, and roll with this damage. Oh, and also I can move the hunter's mark on to the character or the thing when I see it. So, I love that. All right. Yep. Yep. Go ahead and do that. Okay, and then boom. Hey! 18. That hits. Dang. That hits, man. Tell me your right. damage. Damage will be. There it is. Boom. Seven damage. Fantastic. And then I got the hunter's be... mark as well. If... Tell, tell me that total. Uh, it's going to be a d6 as well. So, nine damage. Nine damage. With that, you almost completely wipe out this imp's health. And since you hit it, it is now visible to everyone. Your dragon goes next. All right, dragon will go over there and start trying to bite this.
well, that's a miss, I think. Uh, yeah, it's a 10. That is a miss. Huel, your turn. Huel, Huel, he's our man. If he can't do it, no one can. Huel, 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 Huel. Huel, save me. Huel, All right, maybe. Uh-huh. He might. There's just one imp left. One imp left. Cussing Tasha's three slapped her on him. Well, I'm making start laughing. It's a roll of wisdom save of 14. It's hideous laughter. Wisdom save. Wisdom for these guys is plus one. Eighteen. It saves. It, it begins sense. laughing at, at you instead, Huel. <laughs> um, okay. He's going to start getting mad and I'll move up a little bit. That'll be my turn. All right. Is that Imp's turn? And it is going to turn and attack Inchi. Inchi, it rolled an 18 for attack. Does that hit? I assume it does. Armor class 10? I'll yeah. actually yep. I'll actually cutting words that one like for real this time. Okay. So tell me what that does again. Just makes you re-roll the 18. All right. Okay. Long no, story short. No, hold on. No. No. That's what not do you mean works. no? You can use a bardic inspiration, roll that d6, and subtract it from his roll. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. So if you roll a d6. I'm thinking of silvery barbs. It's my mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Bird do I roll that? Uh, you roll. Even if, even if you get a 6, it'll still be above Inchi's armor class. That's true. Yeah. Because he has a 10 AC. So you'd just be wasting it. How do I just roll a dice? Uh, a little, yeah. I can't roll anywhere. You see the little dice thing on the left? Oh. The T6 button. E4. That'll be 14? Still, yeah, that still hits him. Rip. I tried. Alright. Um, Inchi, it is going to do... one d 4 plus 3 damage. Yeah. So it does 7 damage to you, Inchi. It's oh, now okay. the bugbear's turn. The bugbear is going to attack with its morning star. So it's plus four to its hit. Or to its attack. Getting it a 12. So it also misses the um, imp. The imp turns invisible. This is a very annoying creature to have to fight. Lincoln, your turn. Well, again, I'm going to shoot at that with disadvantage. <laughs> oh, let me. Oh, there you go. So, 16. That hits. I'm going to look at that more. Damn. You obliterate that uh, imp. You don't even see it turn to ash. It just turns into blood and guts and a puff of 
red pout mist and then disappears. At this, the bugbear uh, relaxes and starts nursing its wounds. Uh, and you notice that on the other end of the map here, there are two dead kinku lying in the sewers, each with uh, purple bandanas around their face. Uh, the bugbear and kinku from above ground uh, climb back into the sewers uh, and start uh, talking to the surviving bugbear. Um, so y'all are all down here. What would you like to do? Uh, and she proudly white uh, uh, wraps his uh, purple bandana around his head, very noticeable, and says, You are val very welcome, uh, good sirs. And they go, Oi, always nice to meet a fellow crewmate. Be careful down here in these sewers. They've been getting wild the past couple of days. I ain't never seen devil creatures down here, and today I saw five of those imps. And they were coming for us, too. We didn't stumble across them. They found us. They followed us. Terrifying. Well, sewers, wild, and coming for me. Uh, that's what I'm used to, am I right? And I uh, uh, hold my uh, fist out for a fist bump for a... Uh for the bugbear. There you go. Uh, oi, oi, yeah. Right on, mate. Yeah, but we'll, we'll be just fine. Y'all get to safety and get back to the guild just fine, all right? There you go. Oi, I don't even know if I want to go to the guild today. Security's up high. We'll probably get dragged into some kind of business if we have to go back. Some what business? Grunt business. Ah. All right, well. Y'all take care, then. This is, uh... Don't do with no more imps, all right? They go, yeah, yeah. Does anybody else want to do anything in these sewers? Um, I want to look around real quick while we're here, just to see if I could, uh... You know, maybe see if there's any sort of uh, footprints that would probably be the same sort of footprints I saw when Alanis was killed. I want to roll like a perception around, see if maybe there's like, you know, a trail going somewhere. Just just for an afterthought, maybe come down here at some point to look around. Blinken, you step over here and you examine this kinku. And you notice that it has slash marks around its face and its neck. Uh, they're much smaller than the claw marks you found in your room uh, after mm -hmm. Kalanis died. But uh, you take a listen at this tunnel that you're next to. Uh, and you swear you can hear something in this tunnel, but it's hard to tell if it's your companions, the talking, or the running sewage water. Roll a perception check. You need to get a 19 or above. Jesus. All right. Damn it. Twelve. Oh, so close. Whatever sound you heard disappears down the way. You're not even sure if you heard it in the first place. Hmm. I'll just uh, walk away for now and just kind of, again, notate and try to figure out if maybe where the area is that these weird creatures are hiding in, you know? Mm hmm Okay. Is everyone done in the sewers? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> All right. Y'all climb back out of the sewers, and you are back in the dock ward of Waterdeep. Uh, you follow a few signs uh, around, and you find yourself on Fillet Lane next to the Feward Dragon Bar. So as you walk the dock ward, 
Tall, densely packed tenements leave most of the neighborhood in shadow at ground level. Most of the street lamps have had their glass smashed and candles stolen. The air smells of salt and excrement, and it lingers as you pass by rows and rows of rundown buildings. The skewer dragon looks like a ruin. Both of its front-facing windows are smashed, and the ship's anchor is lodged in the roof. Through the windows, you can see a group of hag haggard patrons drinking from huge tankards. <clears throat> so you are at the skewer dragon. Um, and... Fuck! I, no matter how many times I blow my nose, it keeps getting stuffed up and I can't talk. Give me a second, guys. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, and she waves through the window of uh, the Screw Dragon and says to his crew, Y'all have a good bite to eat or drink or something. All right. I'm going to go check out their trash can back here. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, I'll be right back. And, mm -hmm. uh, and she goes to the uh, dumpster run back. Okay. So you guys are outside the skewer dragon, or I'm sorry, is everyone here? Yeah. Yep. Y'all are outside the skewer dragon. You are looking in. It is about 10 a.m. There's a few people in here drinking, and there's a few people in the back playing cards. What would y'all like to do? Well, and she's looking through garbage. <laughs> yeah, and she just traveled right around the side of the building and is scouring the trash can. <clears throat> uh, going through their trash can, there's nothing good in here. Uh, even, like, the sandwiches that are in here are made of, like, old, soggy bread <clears throat> that have, like, been sitting out in the sea air all night. Like, nothing good is going to be in these trash cans. God, I'm going to hate this, but, uh, how edible is it? Can and she eat it? I mean, everything's edible up to a point. Well, and she still tries to eat from this trash can. Uh, 
All right, roll a constitution check. You need to beat a 16. Damn it. Ooh, so close, my man. Uh, but you gag and throw that up immediately. And then Destry's raven flies down off of Huel's shoulders to the ground and opens its beak and two hands start grabbing bits of the gunk from your vomit and pulling it into that mouth. Mm. Can you taste the soup from earlier, little Inchy? Yeah, uh, uh, you hear the sound of like a big, wet, sloppy chewing, and it goes, "Yes, yes, I can. It's it's delicious." Uh, I wish. Mm. I'll just keep eating and try again. You're going to take another bite? <laughs> yeah. Roll, roll another constitution check. One of these will be good rolls, right? Hopefully. Oh. 17. And she, you're able to bite into the other half of the sandwich, and even though it's oh, 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 the soggiest bread, uh, you're able to keep it down. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. Mm. Probably tastes like that vomit, right? A uh, little energy. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Huel and Blinken, you just watched your friend bite into a sandwich, throw it up, and then take another bite of that sandwich. Honestly, that doesn't surprise me. At this point, yeah, if he's eating garbage. Yeah, it's just like Inchi and the Raven eating the most yeah. disgusting thing you've ever seen Pretty in your life. So it's like, whatever, you know, it's just gross, but I can just walk in and, um, you know, uh, I look at the others and go, all right, you know, am I the only one coming in here or what? Guys, are y'all going in with them? I'll follow them a bit later. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go in. Okay. So y'all walk into the bar. Uh, the inside uh, feels the same as the outside because the windows to the front are broken. Uh, so you're still getting that nice sea breeze. Uh, the person at the bar looks at you disgruntled. Uh, seems to be bothered that you're in here at all. Uh, the patrons at the bar look at you, and the people in the back playing cards say nothing. Gotta roll a perception to see if I could find somebody to talk to. Like, that's willing, that looks like he's willing to, you know, not be a little shit. Okay, go ahead and roll that. Twenty-one. Okay, twenty-one. No one here is talking very much, except for the people in the back playing Three Dragon Ante. Uh, as they lay down cards and pick their, their card that they want to bet on, uh, they are talking to, back and forth to each other, exchanging stories, uh, talking crap to one another. They seem to be the only people in here that are vocal. All right, I look at the, I'll look at the and be like, all right, I guess it's who we're going to talk to. Okay, y'all walk to the back of the bar, uh, and as you like, try to introduce yourself or say hello, they say, no talk unless you're involved in the game. Current ante, two gold coins. So if you put down two gold coins, they'll deal you in, 
and start talking to you. Hmm. All right. I'm gonna throw in. I'll throw in two gold. Sit down and um, play along. And kind of uh, see what we got. Okay. Uh, Hill, do you want to join in this game? Hugh! Hugh! He's dying! Sorry, what was happening? Uh, the people at the back of the bar won't talk to you unless you get involved in their three dragon ante game. Uh, the buy in is two gold coins. Oh, I'll, yeah, I'll look for taking it. Okay. Inchi, do you want to get involved in this game? Uh, what did you say? Two gold? No, Two I'm, gold not throwing a, I'm not throwing a quarter of my savings in into this uh, tomfoolery. <laughs> no. And uh, I talked to one of the non-vocal customers if they threw out a sandwich half an hour ago that I just ate. Uh, they look at you confused. They assume they must be drunk. Uh, with that question that you asked them. It was tuna. Um, okay. Are you sure? They, they look at their own hands, like trying to make sure that they're real. Uh, and then they look at you confused. And they say, what do you want, goblin? The rest of your sandwich. I'll play a better one. The, they don't serve food here. Only mead. Well, then I am really concerned about what I just ate. Yep. Okay. So, <clears throat> Lincoln and Huel, I need both of you to roll three D12s and send me a message of what the highest is. Okay. Okay. Alright, so they deal you three cards each, and this is just a standard set of hard cards, you know. It goes from ace, one, two, three, four, five, six. It goes from ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, um, queen, king. So 12 cards, uh, four suits. Uh, if you got, uh, okay, so whatever number you rolled corresponds to your card type. Uh, if you got a one, you got an ace. If you rolled a two, you got a two, three, four, five, six, uh, at 10. Ah, shit, this is kind of hard to explain. Okay, I'm just going to message you what your card is, okay? Yeah. So the way Three Dragon Ante works is you're dealt three cards, and you're supposed to hold on to your highest card. Um, when it comes to your turn, you can increase your bet, you can fold, or you can turn in one of your cards to try and get a different card from the deck. Um, just a second. You're going to do three rounds of this, and at the end, everybody who's still in the game is going to turn over their cards, and the person with the highest number card wins. Okay? Yep. Uh, let me roll for the boys here. Oh, fuck. I just opened my dice case upside down and everything fell out.
Uh, in the event of a tie, y'all will play another round between the two people that have that tie, okay? Yep. Okay, so we're just going to go counter or clockwise here. So we are going to start with this guy right here. We are going to call him Mr. Ninja. Ninja. And this guy will be Mr. Hart. And this guy will be Mr. Snail. Okay. So Mr. Ninja looks at his three cards and he says, I fold out immediately, boys. Bad hand. Next up is Mr. Hart. Mr. Hart throws one more gold coin into the pile. So now the pot is two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven gold coins. And Blinken, it is over to you. Uh, I'll call the one one goal. So you'll call that. Yeah. I'm trying to write. Shit. All right, twelve gold coins. All right, Huel, it's over to you. You can fold, you can match the bet, <clears throat> uh, or you can uh, match the bet and turn in one of your cards to try to get another card. Oh, yeah, I would turn in a card you, and match the bet. If you turn bet. in a card, you have to add one gold coin to the pile. So you'd have to match the bet and add another gold coin. Yeah. I put the gold in there. All right. You guys keep track of the gold coins you're losing, please. Yep. All right. Mr. Snail goes next. And he says, boy, I'll match that. And he looks over to Mr. Ninja and says, you got to play the hand you dealt. Can't be no coward about it. You're worse than that Rainier fella. And it's back to Mr. Ninja's turn. And he says, Boy, that man, he was a chip off the old block, wasn't he? Trying to buy us our drinks and stuff. I've never been so insulted in my life. Mr. Hart goes next, and he matches the bet and swaps out one coin, one card. So the pot is now 17 gold coins. Blinken, it is back to you. Uh, I will, you know, match the bet and then draw another card. Been doing so, I was like, "Man, that Rainier guy. I've, I've heard stories about that guy. Was he really a, I guess, a downright knob?" Boy, he's probably just a thief and a scammer, just like his father, who ran off with all them coins he uh, stole away from the mint. I can't remember how many coins it was, but it was quite a fucking lot, wasn't it? Huh. I've heard stories about that. Yeah. Whatever happened to that fucker anyway? Um, just a second. Yeah. It 
It's like, oi, uh, Dago never entered the old knob. He ran off to Neverwinter or something. Says he can't remember what he did with the gold. I bet he shoves them gold coins up his bum hole every night, if you know what I'm saying. But as for his son, Rainier, I don't know. He was in here last night. What happened to him, lads? Fuel, it's your turn. You can also increase the bet if you want. So you can take it from two, from one gold coin to three. Should I just like call it? Yeah, call it. Calling it is one gold coin right now. Yeah, yeah, I could call it. Alright, it comes around to Mr. Snail, and he says, Boy, you know what, I put him one good round for it, I'm done here, and he folds. So that's two of the three thugs out. And they start talking back and forth to each other. They say, hey, wasn't there some orchid here the other night drinking? And when Rainer and that follow fellow left, didn't that orc uh, go out with him? Maybe it was some kind of security guard or something. Hmm? And they start muttering back and forth to each other. It goes around to Mr. Hart. And he raises the uh, bet by three gold coins. Hmm. So if you want to stay in for the final round, boys, it's three gold coins. Blinken, it is your turn. All right. Uh, I'll call and be like, um, yeah, those never embers are weird. And like, and you said Volo. Yeah. He's that weird writer I've seen before. But was there, so, it's weird that he has like a security thing going on. Are you sure it's security? What if it's some dude following him? You hear the guy called Mr. Snail say, yeah, I don't think that was security. He looks a little bit shady to me. Blinken, you match the bet? Yeah, I match it. All right, pot is now at 26 gold coins. Huel, it is your final turn. I'll match the three. Pot is now up to 29 gold coins. All right, everybody has to show their cards now. Okay. Mr. Hart is the only one left in it. He lays down an eight of diamonds. <laughs> Blinken, you can reveal your top card now. All right, and I show a queen of diamonds. Huel, what about you? I show a nine of clubs. Oh, nice. All right. That hand goes to Blinken. Blinken at 29 gold coins to your Ooh. inventory. And the guys, two of them go, Hey, mate, nice hand. I couldn't tell you had anything good on you. And one of them goes, Ah, she knew beginner's luck. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Do you guys want to continue playing? Um, I'll, I'll probably do one more hand just to see if I can get some more info. What's that? Hey, I gotta talk to my roommate real quick. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. 
All right. We are going to say the buy end for this round is two gold coins each. Each of the three thugs here throw in two gold coins. So there's six coins in the pot. Lincoln, do you buy in? Yeah, I'll throw in two, that's for sure. Kill. Oh, yeah. I'll throw two gold in. All right. Inchi, you want to get in on this? No, sir. No, sir. All right. All right. What did you want to do this round? Talk to another person? Yep. Just uh, gossiping like, uh, hey, have you heard of this Rainier guy? See where he's at. Uh, One of the drunkards at the bar goes, oh, yeah, Rainier. He's in here. Uh, about once a month whenever he feels like seeing what us bums and poor folk get up to. Uh, they say last time I saw him was a uh, was a uh, a uh, few nights ago. He was here with Balu Thump Goddard. Hello, Thump uh, Goddard. Can you write that down? V O U L L O U T C H A M P. Uh, and she points at the V on the writing. Says, "What is that? Is that is that a five? What what is that?" He says, "Boy, you're the one asking me, mate. I'm doing you a favor." I I I feel like I'm asking a pretty simple question. It, 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 is that supposed to be like a, a V as in value or like a five? Well, he's not named Five Thrump Goddard. He could be. But he's not. Uh, uh, that is good to know, actually. Thank you, sir. Look, I saw that Rainer guy at a store down the street called Old Soblob Shop. He sells a lot oh. of purple stuff. Oh, I like your handkerchief. He sells purple stuff like your handkerchief. Oh, oh. I'll slop. I'm gonna write that down too, and and she tries his best to write that down. I'm gonna write it in chat. Ah, pfft. one second. Old Zoblob Shop of Curiosities on Candle Lane. Sorry, my laptop is acting slow right now. Oh, it's okay. All right. We are going to move two over for the starting thing. So, Blinken, you're going to go first. Same thing, boys. Roll three D12s and message me what your highest roll is. And I will do the same for the thugs. This game is called Three Dragon Ante. It is the game that uh, that was talked about in the briefing that you got earlier today from the Golden Keys. Uh, you know that Xanathar's Casino, the Afterlife Casino, is having a big Three Dragon Ante tournament on its opening night. But uh, that is what Inchi wrote down. Okay. Okay. Um. Just a second, guys.
What are the four suits? Clubs, diamonds, spades. Clubs, diamonds, spades, hearts. Okay. Okay. All right, I've sent y'all what you have. Lincoln, it is your turn first. Uh, I'll you, put in uh, I'll put in a gold coin um, and be like, yeah, it's kind of. Weird about that uh, orc. Uh, do you know if that orc frequents here or something? Or have you seen this orc before? Um, I've thrown two orcs into this campaign already, so let me change that real quick. Okay. Uh, it was a dwarf. A dwarf. Oh, uh, okay. 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 Have you seen this dwarf okay. before? You ask that question, uh, and they go, you know. I think I would have remembered a dwarf like that. Very rarely do you see one oil their beard and, and make it do all fancy, silly shapes like that. Pule, it's your turn. What do you do? I would, I'd, I'd call it. I'd put in the one. Okay. It is Mr. Snail's turn. Mr. Snail says, oh boy, y'all are playing at low stakes here. I'm going to raise you about two. So he throws in two gold coins. Uh. It is Mr. Ninja's turn. And he throws away one of his cards and he matches the bet. So that was three gold coins. It is Mr. Hart's turn. And Mr. Hart takes a look at all three of his cards, and he folds immediately. And uh, he says, yeah, and it wasn't just his beard that was fancy. It was his clothes, too. It looks like he had a lot of gold on him. Normally don't see that around here. Lincoln, it is your turn. Yeah, and then I'll, I'll throw in two more and be like, yeah, it seems like uh, maybe... Well, to me, it sounds like some weird noble men or something, some privileged motherfucker. That's what it sounds like to me. Okay. Do you match the bet? Yeah, I'll match it. Okay. Kill your turn. I'll slam the two pieces down and I'll match them. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, Blinken, it was two. So the pool is at 21 right now? Yeah, yeah. Mr. Snail matches. Mr. Ninja again turns in one card and matches the bet, bringing it to 25 gold coins when it comes around to you, Blinken. And they say, <clears throat> Now I could have sworn that he had it to put on a tab. And it's really rare that you see people pay with a tab here. Maybe the bartender knows something. Blinken, That's... it is your turn. Interesting. It is your final bet. Yeah, I'm going to do... I'll put in two coins and I'll put in one of my cards. Okay, so that's three gold coins total. Message me. Uh, roll it 1d12. And if that's higher than what you your highest card was, message me. Okay. Yule, it is your turn. Final bet. I'd match the bet. What was it? Two or three? Three, uh, three total. Two. Or, yeah. Two. Yeah. So that brings you to an even 30 when it leaves you. Mr. Snail says, Ah, you know what? Fuck it. I raise. And he throws down four gold coins. Mr. Ninja... 
holds as well. So Ninja and Heart are out of the game. Lincoln, you have to match his final bet. So you have to throw in two more gold coins or you have to fold. I look at my cards and be like, oh, that's way too rich for me. Let me uh, fold that. And I fold. Lincoln folds. Huel, what do you do? You have to throw in two more to match the bet, or you have to fold and let him win by default. I'll match him and throw it in. Slam so it you down. You throw it in. Total pool is now 36 gold coins. Mr. Snail reveals his card. It is a seven of diamonds. Huel, what do you have? Queen of Hearts. Oh. Huel, you win 36 gold coins. My man. Hell yeah. Starts picking it all up. That's a good hand, buddy. Oh, yeah. That's pretty good. Nice. Nice job to the both of you. Okay. Um, y'all could sit down and play another round uh, if you want. Or y'all could do something else. What do you want to do? Um, I think I'll stand up. I'll be like, uh, thanks for the games, guys. It was fun. Maybe I'll come back later. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll follow him. Right. I'll say this big token over here is the bartender. Alright, did anybody want to talk to anyone else in this bar? Um, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll approach the bartender. The bartender is uh, cleaning a glass or, or a cremaic mug very aggressively. Uh, it's rubbing a spot on it and it can't quite get the gunk out, so he spits on that spot and uses a rag to uh, uh, polish and uh, wipe up that spot. What do you say to him? I'll be like, uh, excuse me, I'm, uh, see that you're a little busy here. Do you, do, have you by chance found some, or see, seen some, uh, sort of, oh, I don't know, some, some, some people will call him a, a dwarf, like, uh, kind of slick back, fancy looking. Have you seen that type of guy before? Oh, yeah. Some dwarf noble was in here the other day. Ran up a tab, said that he would pay it, never came back for it. That's the nobles for you, ain't it? Isn't it? Jesus, how much is a tab? He ran up 12 gold coins. You know how much beer you gotta buy here to run up a tab of 12 gold coins? Jesus, yeah, that's a lot. Um, and then, like, I'm, I'm like, scratching my chin. <sighs> Shit, maybe, maybe I'll... For him. Do, do you know? Do you know where he came from? What type of family or something? I mean, that, that's that's kind of fucked up, man. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty fucked up. It was Lord Growlhund. Huh. And that is the fancy noble that followed Rainier out of the bar. Okay. Lord Growlin, man, that sounds like a... That, that sounds pompous to me. What a little shit. Tell you what, though, I'm gonna go ahead and give you uh, 12 gold now just for the information, and I'm gonna chase after him and beat the shit out of him so I can get the money. There he goes. Hey, right, make sure you don't just beat him. Kick him in the balls. That's a good move. Yeah, I need to look for this motherfucker. Thanks for the info, buddy. All right. Uh, Y'all step back out onto the street. Uh, Inchi, did you want to ask anything else here? Are you sure you didn't have a tuna and I think it's a blue cheese sandwich? Are you sure you didn't eat that, uh, sir? Mate, the only thing we eat around here is chewing tobacco. Uh. Are you sure that wasn't blue cheese by accident? He hands you a little pot, and he says, that's the spitting pot. Why don't you check it for any blue cheese? 
Uh, and she, damn it. Uh, if she dips his finger in and licks it. Uh, oh. Now I have to roll a constitution check. Uh, you, you need to roll one That's with gross. disadvantage. That's gross. You have to beat a, beat an 18 with disadvantage. So gross. D disgusting. De-inspiration. This, uh, that's fair. That's fair. Despicable Ooh. behavior. That's just nasty. Undignified. <laughs> that's a seven. Seven. Ooh. A seven? Yeah, you run outside and throw up immediately. <laughs> That, uh, yeah, that's blue cheese to me. <clears throat> you just call anything that makes you throw up blue cheese? <laughs> yep. Yep. <clears throat> like it walks out after that and I'm like, all right, well, looks like you found something to eat. I think I got some information. That That's good. <clears throat> Good. <laughs> Jesus. Christ. Okay, so you know that Lord Growlhund followed uh, Rainer Neverember out of the bar. So the timeline is Volothramp arrived at the bar with Rainier. They ate, they drank, they played cards, they talked for a bit, and then Volo left. A few hours later, Rainier left, and this Lord Growlhund followed after him. You walk out onto the docks ward, and you see around you streets and streets and streets of warehouses. What do you do? Oh, well, I look at Inchi and be like, after he's done throwing up and stuff, uh, did you get anything besides, I guess, blue cheese or whatever the fuck you just said? Food poisoning. All I know is that that Rainier guy did business in here. And uh, he might be somewhere around these uh, uh, areas. But no, I did not get anything for certain. Hmm. Well, where would be a dignified wharf be? Anybody know anybody that... that... <laughs> knows a family or something that has a very well-groomed dwarf. I can try to sniff out. Good. Uh, what, no, what were you going to say? Uh, I can try to sniff out the blue cheese smell that I had earlier that might lead us to our rainier. Um... All right. <laughs> Why do you confused. think that? Uh, and she uh, has been focusing on the blue cheese and tuna sandwich he ate from the dumpster, and he's hoping that is from the Rainier guy. That is all he has to go on, but that is what he's tracking. Why would, why would you think that? <laughs> also, the, the, the that, shots of curiosities thing is a thing, but Lincoln doesn't know that. I mean... Who else would eat that aside from an important character? Despicable, you, but important. Do you tell them that you that you overheard Rainier shops at Old Zoblob shop? I don't think Inchi remembers that, so no. Oh my fucking god. Okay. I'm just going to look around um, and see if um, I can find <laughs> something that looks like it's well-groomed dwarf. Um, Y'all start setting about the docks ward. Uh, we're going to call it here for the night. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to say, like, you could do some research at your guild hall, see if you could find any holdings of this lord. Uh, Y'all could break into the records of the dock ward, try to find out if he owns any warehouses around here, um, go to the library and do research on him or something like that. 
Inchi, you could always go to the Thieves Guild and ask around. Yeah, Inchi might remember better after he looks at these uh, recordings. Off canon. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, man. We are going to call it there. We all have two active missions. Find Rainier Never Ember and uh, get ready to heist Xanathar's uh, casino opening somewhere in Waterdeep. Y'all have a contact at a bar uh, that you can meet to find out more about this, or you can start doing your own research on the casino, and that'll all happen next session. All right, and then in that case, I will be rating up to someone. Uh, thank you all for watching, and then be on next time. Um, again, uh, if you haven't followed me or anything like that, please do. Um, these sessions are fun. I, I think everyone else appreciates it. So I'll rate up to ooh, Kiri. She's on. She's a. Uh, I think she's from Vancouver area, if I remember correctly. But um, she's playing League of Legends. Let's give her a a watch. See y'all next time. See you. Yeah. It.